It's Dr. Gervais show, isn't it? With Steve Murchie. Yeah, yeah, we're all here. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I can't wait. I can't believe it. We've got some great stuff coming up, Steve. Well, well, I'm, I'm being honest. Go on. There's some great tunes. Yep. We've got, oh, uh, uh, it's, there's too many to mention. Don't mention them. Well, there's, there's about 20, actually. Is there? We could mention them. Looking forward to them. Um, I've got, I've got a brand new feature okay. as well. You know, I'll do my film with you. Loving it. And, uh, you know, we do run for the covers and mm. song for the lovers and all mm. that. Got a new feature. Go on. That film sounds good. Right. It's not the film with you. It's a, it's a track from a film. That's brilliant, really. Yeah. That's uh, That film amazing. sounds good. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. People will be desperate to look forward to that. And there'd just be some chat as well. There'd just be some natter in. Carl, have we got anything to give away this week? No. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah, I quite like giving stuff away. Yeah, I feel quite powerful. Does you know in the week? Is there any meetings like oh, what should we give like Ricky and Steve to give away? Because I mean I'll see lots of trailers for the breakfast show and that and prize and that. Or do they go? They go who? <laughs> no. Coming Saturdays. Saturdays. What? I, I don't work Saturdays. No, but it, they're, they're still on the air Saturdays. Is it? Who listens on a Saturday? Yeah, between I one and three. Oh, that's the worst time, <laughs> isn't it? They, so, they sort of hear you, you know taking the mickey out of, of what tickets you're given, and yeah. I think this week you could have had St. Etienne, but they said no. We'll hold them back. I love well, being punished. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you what we're being punished for, we're being subversive and rock and roll. Yeah. Is that a crime, Rick? I don't think so. No. High five. No, I'm, high five. <laughs> you've got to hit the hand, yeah, otherwise it, it, it sounds embarrassing. You're a lot taller than well, me, aren't just you? Just hit high five. Yes. Sweet. It's so much better than last week. Last week was a point I don't want to talk about. Well, it, it wasn't too bad, actually. Was it? Apparently. No, um, I, I, you know, I said, oh, we were really off and Steve was hungover and I was tired and we couldn't be bothered. And, uh, they were going, no, it's as good as any other week. Ooh. Which is pretty disappointing, isn't it? You want them to go, well, I'll tell you what, it was the worst one ever and it was still brilliant. <laughs> it was still magnificent. As opposed to, yeah. it was one of the best. <laughs> like rubbish. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good, so we're gonna really, we, you know. Yeah, we're gonna up, up the ante today. Yeah. Come Ooh. on, Carl. Cheer let's up. Th let's make this, Carl, let's make this the best show ever. Alright. Should we have a big group hug? Yeah. Oh, Carl, no, come on. No, let's have a big group lick. Yeah. Carl, oh, come on. look at his little oh, face. Look at his face. You can see why the ladies love him. <laughs> He's a cute guy. No, you're a cute guy. And I'm not having a go, I genuinely think you are, so don't have a go back at me. Oh, I've got some news for you, Steve. Go on. Where is it? Carl, where is that thing? Right, here you are. Company magazine are compiled in a 50 most eligible bachelors feature. Ding dong. The May issue 2002, right? These are the requirements, right? Single, right? Yeah. That means available, not just unmarried. Just, you know, okay. uh, age 20 to 30, you're well in there. I'm straight in there. Uh, um, C. Um, D. What was C? C is, um, it, it says good looking. Uh, Fine, yeah, I'm eligible so far. And it Keep says going. not, ah, oh, no, this is what rules you out probably. It says not necessarily Brad Pitt-esque. And you are a little bit. <laughs> well, um, so they say. Uh, it must be British and come from one of the following uh, regions. London, South East, South West, you're there. That's me. I, I think they just name all the regions of Britain. Yes, they right. could just say from Britain. You really? Um, imp employ, well, sorry, Carl, go on. Is there a height restriction on <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're so what is this? What is this? Is this a serious yeah. thing? What yeah. is it? It's the most eligible bachelor. I, I, this is so me. Do you know any of the boys who'd be perfect for us company girls? Past bachelors have included TV presenters Dermot O'Leary. Yeah. Hey, I'm in with Dermot O'Leary. He knows me. He's not yeah. on, isn't he? Yeah. Jamie it, it's, it's not. It's not most eligible person who knows a bachelor. The models Rob Warrington and James Polanski. Yeah. Uh, the singers Lyndon David Hall and Richard Blackwood. Yeah. Wouldn't necessarily consider him a singer. Uh, controversial. I'm so <laughs> He's having a dig at Blackwood. Hey, I'll tell you this, I was watching, uh, or I, I don't suppose watch it, but I saw the trailer for The Farmer Wants a Wife. Oh yeah. Right, which is which the show, which you mentioned, yeah, it? you did. Which yeah. is a show where I think farmers, because obviously it's very difficult for them to meet women. Wants a wife? And I'm thinking, hello, I dear, Steve Merchant wants a wife. It's not bad, It's is a it? TV show. Who sounds a bit like a farmer. <laughs> exactly. This is, this what is I'm good. saying is, I don't mind the public voting for the woman, you know, if, if that's how it happens. I don't mind, you know, because... Who, who cares? You know, yeah. I, I'll do. I'll, I'll have anything. Whatever they can choose, <laughs> be fine. You know. See that? I think yeah. Steve Merchant wants a farmer. That'd be even better. <laughs> Steve Merchant wants it. Yes, yeah, Steve Merchant wants it. I'm thinking, um, sort of the, maybe the Bravo Channel on cable. Yeah. You know, or ITV Two. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. An, it's an idea, Rick. I'm just flying out of the flagpole. Yeah. Well, we're we'll, we'll thinking about that. Yeah. Um, phone. Don't phone. Hey, you, you'd have been proud of me last night. No, listen, you'd have been proud of me because I was walking back from the shops. Uh, I was carrying two cans of wheat lager. It was Friday night, Rick. Yeah. Time to go a bit crazy. Yeah. And there's this woman coming the other way. It must have been sort of fifty, fifty-five just standing on the street, dressed in kind of like rhinestone cowboy style outfit. Really weird, never seen her before. Parton? 
<laughs> it can't. It wasn't Dolly. No. And she's just staggering down the road, like, she's just, ah, just saying, and some truck drove by, and she just went, oh, hey, guys, come over here, come over here. And, uh, and the car just drove by, whatever, and she walked into me, and she, she saw me coming, and she saw the beer in my hand, she couldn't believe her luck, and she stopped, and she tried to stop me, and I sort of stepped one side, stepped one way to try and go past her, she stepped there and blocked my way, so she blocked the other way, and she went, come here, come here, like, trying to motion, and I was really scared, it was you like do, some, it you was looked like around some, and thought, beggars can't be Jesus. Well, this is, but then, like, for a minute, I was thinking, <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's Friday night, <laughs> you know, I'm in a mood to make whoopee, but, um, I thought it's probably best to avoid it, and I actually <laughs> managed to, uh, run away and uh, avoid her and she just kept shouting at me as I was running down the road to come 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 with me come with me but I legged it but what I was thinking it was like some kind of like sort of Hansel and Gretel nightmare <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah. an old lady in your way you're going there and there's loads of other people that look just like you <laughs> exactly. and they're yeah. getting very very thin we've been here for years in chains <laughs> yeah yeah but I thought you'd be proud of me now there was that that was you know that was a woman on a plate so to speak and uh, and I just turned it down and that uh, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. you see so you went not, not so went, desperate. Uh, he, so. he, he got in and went, what have I done? <laughs> Seeing her again tonight, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna hang around by the off offy, see what happens, you know. <laughs> Looking forward to Christmas? Loving it. I'm always a big fan of Christmas, actually, and yeah, no, I'm not a bad humbug type. It's, it's not, it's not far now, is it? It's, uh, it's this month now. Is it? Is it? Are we in December? Is it the first? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. We, um, Brilliant. We, uh, well, I, I was quite excited because, um, <laughs> this week in the, I think it was this week in the papers, the Sun, um, and I think all the other papers actually, uh, had the the first of the kind of giveaway uh, TV supplements that oh, comes out listing all the that. shows that are on. But one of the, the, the when they bring them out this early is you open it and it's like you think yeah I want to see what films are on and stuff and you go through it and it just about half of the listings are to be confirmed. Mm. To be confirmed, it's utterly it's an utter waste of time. Yeah, and it's like but it's like who is planning their film their film and TV watching this early? Yeah. It's a little bit early to be worrying about Three it. Three weeks in advance going, no, oh, but I better not make any... Well, unless it's like a, you know, an amazing thing on telly, or you, you know... Are you, you coming to a party? We've got one, uh, Friday 29th. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna watch something on the TV, it's a good film. What is it? Not being confirmed yet. It's to just... be confirmed, <laughs> yeah. but I can just, you know, say this, I won't be at the party. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. But I remember when I was, um, little, my sister used to work in W. H. Smith's, and, uh, uh, she used to come home like every Thursday. She'd been paid big bag of sweets for Lovely. me, and uh, you know the 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 TV times. The TV times, of course, because you're yeah. working class. Sort the TV of. times, the radio times for a classier middle yeah. class gentleman but, like myself. But the the bumper edition at Christmas, that it's like two weeks of telly. She sit down like that Thursday night, sit down with Miss Sweets, and we tick off all the things we were going to watch over the That's next really two tragic. weeks. Didn't happen, did it? Because I, you know, I was squeaking around, hyperactive, making people play with toys, mm. stuff, and not watching telly really. I but bet I you. Mean, but if you watched any telly, it'd have been really rubbish stuff. The whole family was out. I imagine probably Dennis Norden's Laughter File, Volume Twelve <laughs> or whatever it is. I don't think. You because where is going then? Whereas you see, we in our house, of course, we'd often not we just switch off the TV and we yeah. perhaps just listen, you know, you to the concerto on Radio Three. Ooh, yeah, yeah, we weren't allowed to turn the telly off. Really, I don't know what a concerto is. I've just said that word. I'm I assuming don't know what a concerto is. It's like a just a, a posh word for concert, isn't it? I think so. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. What's a concerto? It's one of those. Maybe it's one of those instruments, the kind of squeeze box. That's a concertina. concertina. It's a concertina. Yeah. Yeah. My nan used to play a concertina. Really? Yeah. I don't know if that's interesting to you. But I don't know why you choose the concertina of all the instruments to play. I mean, well, it's not the sexiest, it's only kind of sailors. Well, my, well, my nan used to have one, but she doubled up with, uh, as an iron lung. Nice. Which was good. And so when she, you know, <gasps> when she had a bit of an attack, we yeah. not only were warned, yeah. but we had a little tune. That's beautiful. As well, yeah. Can you play your grand? You can play your grand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Once she had a bit of an accident, she said, sit down, kids, and she came in there, and she had a corrugated neck. Ah, uh, of course. Where, where it had gone. Horribly wrong. You, it's, go on. Sorry, what were you going to say? It's it happening again, Steve. What's happening? It's going all wrong. Yeah. We're talking rubbish. Are we? Yeah. We should have played two in a row. He's having a go, isn't he? Blimey. Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. Sweet. Together again. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> the old team. They said it never happened. Plus happen. Carl, he presses the button. Yeah, it's not draw attention yeah. to right. him. Okay. We were talking about, um, squeeze boxes. Yes. And, uh, it got me to thinking, what's happened to him? You don't see him. Do you know what I mean? Instruments should be around forever, you know what I mean? The piano forte, as <laughs> oh, I call it's it. a classic. Been around forever. They invented it, it's around. You know, the saxophone was only, I think, the 20s or 30s, mm. but you know, I can't imagine it going away. There's so a number of instruments probably dying out. Loot. <laughs> the loot. The loot you rarely see now. You rarely see, uh, except maybe on a, um, Men Without Hats. What was Men so, Without Hats? Or Marillion. Right, right, Men Without yeah. Hats. We can dance if we want to. And Pierre Trudeau's daughter was in that video. Who was that we saw in a sandwich shop yesterday? 
Well, he might not want us. To, he might want to be to people to know that he was in a sandwich shop. It's fine. It just shows that he's he didn't human. Bruce Dickinson. He didn't recognise him. I went, no, Bruce yeah. Dickinson from yeah. Iron Maiden. I had no Little idea. Fella, wasn't he? I'd Little say player. he's really tiny. It was yeah. almost laughable. Is it he married? That annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you just alienated yourself from a lot of heavy metal fans now because yeah. he's Ooh, pretty I'm much scared. of a guru. They never leave their bedrooms, Rick. They, yeah, but they've got powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they're, they're putting crystals now on toads, <laughs> and they're going to turn you into a. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. All right. Well, no. Let's have a go. I was having a go. I stopped myself, realizing it wasn't much of a threat. Rick, right. Go on. What else is dying out? <sighs> Pipes. Pipes. You never see people smoking pipes. Why Young don't people you? now are not smoking pipes. No. You see old people, you're right, but kids, you've got to start taking up pipes, otherwise they're gonna die out, because <laughs> yeah. people of the older generation, <laughs> they're, they're gonna die did, soon. Did, I'm not smoking a pipe. I should with be. pipes, though, did, w was it like the fashion where when you smoked, you started, you know, uh, at a young age and then carried on, or did you just start at 50? But no, because if you see like, um, sort of shots of kind of, uh, you know, sort of prof professorial types yeah. from the 1930s at yeah. st when they're at Oxbridge, yeah. they're always smoking pipes in a tweed jacket. Yeah. That was when they started, like, university. Yeah, but they still do. So yeah, I mean, no, but, I don't, no, there's but, lots of things that should die out in the rest of the world, carry on in Oxbridge colleges. Yeah, but my point is Boaters. that- Boaters. Alright, alright, all I'm saying is that they're not even in Oxbridge now, they're not even smoking pipes. I bet there is There's someone. no one smoking pipes. Yeah, I bet there is. Right, I'd like to know if there's anyone listening who's under the age of 30 that smokes a pipe regularly, and I don't mean like a crack pipe. And I, and I guarantee they went to Oxford or Cambridge. <laughs> okay, yeah. what's the number? 0 800 Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Pipes are dying out. Yeah. Snuff. That's as good as gone. Yeah. Snuff. S yeah. Trilbies. My friend always said if he won like loads of money on the lottery, he'd like to try really hard to try and bring back as a fashion accessory the cape. I uh, see. Because the capes like, are classy. I quite like the cape. The cape's brilliant because you can kind of you know kind of mask your face with it. Yeah. Dracula like. You can have it off but still on and on but still off. Exactly. It's not like a coat. You know what I mean? Where you drape it over your shoulders and that can fall down. Carl, you're what not a fan it? of the cape. You're turning your nose up. But the cape, that's a madness. No pockets. <laughs> Good point. You <laughs> could have some kind of inner sort of smuggler's if pocket. They did that, poacher's one. pocket. <laughs> if, they did, if they did that, I'd buy one. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, that sounds good. It's that sounds good. It's just gone half past. It's the new <laughs> I feature. Can't believe that it. sounds good. I, for a minute there, I was completely lost. Yeah. Remind me again, what's that wow. sounds good? Uh, I, I thought, no, hang on, it's that film sounds good. Oh yeah, <laughs> that film sounds good. <laughs> right, this isn't this isn't my famous film review, which I've got coming up. Right. Look forward to that. It's brilliant. Yes, it's it's quite a delicate subject, but I think I deal with it sensitively. Brilliant. Okay. Um, this is that film sounds good. Right, and I'm taking. Remind us again what that is. What this well, it's is? I'm going to pick a song from a, a film. Okay. That's on the, uh, from the soundtrack, right? Yes. I'm choosing a song from uh, Jackie Brown. Okay, great film. Yeah, brilliant film. And this is Across 110th Street by Bobby Womack. That's a lovely. Feature, and that actually. was that's the first feature. Oh, that film sounds good. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. That's I'm thinking fun. of actually bringing out maybe a compilation of. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Song for the lovers. What maybe. sort of things can we hear? Can we, can we expect in the future? Uh, I know you're a big fan. Uh, this is brilliant. He bought, right, the soundtrack <laughs> to the film Braveheart, <laughs> which is just well, kind of- No, let me just well, explain, which is just kind of big or orchestrated numbers, right? James and Warner. As far as he's concerned, that's classical music. <laughs> he's got a classical music CD in his collection. It's the music from Braveheart. <laughs> oh. Oh, I sit there and I think, yeah, mate, I'd probably sort of lead my people's, yeah. you know. He's obsessed uh, with Braveheart. He actually sort of relates to William Wallace. He actually thinks, yeah, that's the sort of thing I'd be doing. Yeah. Is no. What was it you were working out to the other day as well? He's you know he's got like a personal like gymnast or whatever. It's what's it called? Is it a gym gym no, expert? A no, trainer? You've got a personal. I box with this bloke. Yeah, he goes boxing in like some underpass somewhere. <laughs> Right, every day, like, no single, like every single every day, day, he goes boxing. Right, but and what was it you were training? What did you tell me oh you were training to this week? God. What oh, music this, did this, you have on? Oh my god, I have, I have actually. Now I never this, but I have actually gone red, haven't I? Yes. Right. It's I very was, hard to embarrass. I was working. I was working out and training and boxing. <laughs> oh my god! You're gonna have to play a record after this. To the Rocky soundtrack. To the Rocky soundtrack. He's bought, right, a CD which has got the best music from all of them. Now, was it Eye of the Tiger or was it? <laughs> it starts up with Eye of the Tiger, then it goes, Ah, 
heart's on fire. That's me sort of <laughs> right my, Then it goes dun 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 Does any of your training with your with your uh, trainer, does it ever involve you running through snow <laughs> with a log chained to your back? Yeah. Like in Rocky Four. I, I was often have to help Russian peasants because their, <laughs> their cart horse has like fallen over but I lift it up. Whereas the other fella, he's training in a posh gym having injections. I'm not. I'm just like breaking rocks and yeah. punching dead cows. Where'd you get that from? It's handy, wasn't it? Put it on. That's magnificent. Yeah. That's now Ricky Gervais's theme tune. Yeah. Every time we start the show, we should just start with that. Win, Ricky, win. <laughs> <laughs> I hated you two for about 15 years. Before, really I know, I know, but I love that one now. Mm -hmm. I just love that album. I, oh, they can't put a foot wrong. Do you now. ever listen to the whole album? Because oh. I know you tend to buy albums just for the singles. <laughs> when you could, of course, just buy the singles. <laughs> uh, it's, I know where he's going. I bought light, funky ones. Oh, you know I wanted to say that. Yeah, I bought light, funky ones because I. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> light, <laughs> funky ones. <laughs> Do you remember the Love Funkers? That was about like a year ago. Uh, what did they uh, do? They did Girl uh, in a Green um, Dress, yeah, a Girl on TV. And, uh, Abercrombie That one that goes, oh, yeah, Summertime Abercrombie and Fitch. The girls are wearing up. Do you remember that? It's like a light sort of summer Listen, nonsense. I've got a lot of money. It's nothing to me, okay? <laughs> the light to funky I, I want a bit of light funky ones once. That's 15 quid. It's nothing to me. <laughs> you put the two singles on, right? Never listen to the rest of the album. <laughs> I never listen to the two singles that, again either. The light funky ones. <laughs> Oh, it's just uh, the, my street cred's gone down it. Rocky soundtrack and the light funky ones. You'd make two mistakes. Right, let's not forget Braveheart, the soundtrack. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a good film. Right, we were talking earlier about stuff true story about a little Australian freed the Scottish. <laughs> the stuff that's dying out that we, I think you and I single-handedly need to kind of uh, resurrect and salvage. Yeah. I thought the Trilby was dying out. Yeah, I'll surprise you. And yet, was like, watching yeah. Top of the Pops last night, yeah. Jamiroquai was wearing one, and then lo and behold, Danny Minogue came on. She had one as well. I thought, blimey, there's two people there trying to salvage the trilby. And good really? Luck well, yeah. that's on its way then. Let, let them the do that. The trilby's fine. Let's do something else. But the bowler hat. Ah, the bowler hat. You never see, see the bowler. I always fancy myself in a bowler hat. I love a bowler hat. Carl, would you wear a bowler hat? You, I know you'd wear a cape. I did wear a trilby. You know, trilby, really? Mm. You must have looked like a. That's brilliant. What? Because you're a Mancunian. Well, the, there was a phase, wasn't there, in about ninety? When was it? I think that was just round your way. <laughs> it might have been. It was in Manchester. They still get a job lot of trilbies and uh, persuades you kids. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what's trendy. No, you know, no, Sean Ryder is one of these. <laughs> Does he, yeah? Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Quid. And then everyone in your street had trilbies on. But you've never worn a bowler? <laughs> never. What about Kangol bowler? You Does might think about it. Out again. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I, I would like to wear a bowler hat in a, in a dark hat, but I'm worried I look like one of those little fellas off the Home Pride advert. The Home Pride guys, they've been persevering with the bowler for years. They still look good in it though, They're still they? looking good, they're dapper guys. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, the Jolly Green Giant, he had quite a distinctive look, which is obviously one I've been thinking of exploiting. What, the, the little, um, oh, the, I know, the little, um, uh, yeah, sort of like a little dress. Was it Corncroft? Cro Corncroft yeah. made out of his little skirt. Yeah. What yeah. was the Jolly Green Giant so jolly about? Probably. He was very pleased. It was kind of just been the sweet corn and the peas. No, I reckon it was his enormous jolly green knob. <laughs> I mean, he must have got up every day and gone, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been so happy. The, thing, the only thing that's like, in the case of the jolly green giant, or like when Gulliver was a giant and he was in Lilliput and all the Lilliputians, yeah. like, yeah. they helping him out, they were feeding him and stuff. Yes. If you're a giant like that in that yeah. situation, how do you sort of have a little sneaky... Tug. You know, a little tug, a little J. Arthur rank. I don't know, because it's like... It's, it's very like, tricky to do that. you're as big secretly. as their mountains, exactly. aren't you? You can't hide. They, they go, oh, you know, I mean, there's no... There's no the, well, all the it, little village probably just thought it was a tidal wave or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's pretty grim, though. Yeah. I mean, the tidal wave's pretty desperate. I know. It's how would he have gone to the mayor and said, I need, I oh, need a Kleenex the, the size, size of a yeah. tennis court yeah. and a gigantic copy of the Daily Star. No, yeah. I never understood with giants how they actually got that big in the first place, because what food was around to make them, because not only were they like big, big, but they were mostly big. They, like, did, they ate well. They ate whole cows, probably. When, yeah, Carl, you it, know, you it's know, not well documented, Carl. Is you know, it? you know, they don't actually exist and never have. Hmm. Okay. Right, it's time for a feature. I think. <laughs> oh, Carl, I've got. So there was a TV show I watched once on uh, the History Channel. This is the History Channel. Yeah. It was the history of werewolves. Right, the history of werewolves, <laughs> yeah. and the whole show is predicated on the fact that at the end we'll tell you if they ever existed or not. Yeah. Just waiting. And they go, oh, come on, we're going to be late. Hold on, he's going to tell us <laughs> exactly. if they existed or not. Carl, werewolves. 
Michael Aspel was in it, and Michael Aspel is a top broadcaster and therefore would not associate himself with something that, that did not exist. Under the covers, time gents. Under the covers. Cover me run up, cover, cover me bad, run for cover. Here <laughs> come the covers. <laughs> yeah. Mm, covers. I this, like cover songs. This is a cover version. Yes. Uh, this is from an album which, uh, is a bit hit and miss, as these things often are. It's, uh, different artists covering the songs of Leonard Cohen. You've oh, got yeah. the pixies on there, R.E.M., Nick Cave, different people. This, bizarrely, is Lloyd Cole, not someone I'm normally a fan of, but doing oh, a like version- doing a version of the fantastic Leonard Cohen song, uh, Chelsea oh, Hotel, doing his version of Chelsea Hotel. Under the covers. Under the covers. I thought it was a beautiful version. It's lovely. You know that, apparently, really I think nice. it's that song, uh, uh, sweet. written by Leonard Cohen originally, and I think it's about his, uh, brief romance with, uh, Nico, who made a name, of course, oh, of with course, the Velvet Underground, Underground, and was yeah. a tragic, uh, drugs victim. But it's interesting, because I'm looking at this, this is a compilation called I'm Your Fan, which is cover songs of Leonard Cohen's music, and as I say, R.E.M., there's people on the Nick Cave who are still going, there's a couple of names you don't tend to hear of that often now, The House of Love. Oh, yeah. Rarely hear them, do you? Um, That Petrol Emotion. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Petrol Emotion. Yeah. Uh, who else we got on here? Uh, it says Robert Forster. Now, is he a musician, or is it... I don't Robert Forster. I don't know. Well, if you know, um, <laughs> who Robert Forster is, I thought he was a writer. The Lilac Time. The Lilac <laughs> Time. <laughs> They're on there as well. <laughs> you can't uh, just say the name of a band and laugh. <laughs> you can if it's the Lilac Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. um, we were- Did I tell you before that we, my friend and I once listed words we thought should be rude, th but aren't, like cassock, we always thought. Yeah, and, bollards. Uh, he, bollards. <laughs> and he always pointed out the blow monkeys. Yeah. Which I was like, <laughs> it could be a very rude word, um, but it isn't. It isn't. Okay, that that's could be fine. a new feature, couldn't it? Mm. We're featured up, aren't we? Aren't we? This is we've brilliant. This is it. We've still got the film review to come. Song for Lovers is coming up in a few minutes. Song for the Ladies. Yes, yeah, Song for the Ladies. Uh, uh, well, if I can got? squeeze in a hip-hop track, I'd love to do it. Yeah. That's that's called our hip-hop track bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing. Do you have a classic song, Rick? What, what were you thinking of? Oh, I don't know. Maybe something by, um, Nirvana? Well, there's, there's, well, their biggest classic, you mean? Ideally. Smells like teen spirit. Pop Idol, I've not been watching it. I, You're I, joking. Yeah, I don't know what's happened really. I've lost interest. Oh, well, it's, it is like most things, like the, 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 the preliminary rounds, um, Always that's when all the real freaks and no hopers, you know. Um, but some of, I, I, sometimes I watch those sort of things and I sort of laugh and I think, oh dear, I shouldn't be laughing at him because he's not just rubbish, he's verging on the mentally ill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So those mm. people that go along, you want to go, who, who told you to go along? What, what were you thinking? Right? Well, it's the fact that there was no one to stop them going. That's what's even more terrifying. Yeah. I know. Um, and, uh, Simon Cowell's good. Oh, you're he's great value, yeah. He's amazing. And Foxy. I like Foxy now. I know, I've warmed to, He's uh, come round, Dr. Dr. Fox. He's a, he's a lovely little shiny tree. Now, often I notice he's not always there week, on, week in, week in. Is that because he's off doing medical, uh, operations? He's got his practice still. He's got the practice, he's got to maintain that. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's on, uh, Isn't it the big ones tonight? I mean, when I say the big ones, <laughs> it's Capital Ray, he's still on... <laughs> Capital Radio, yeah. that he's got yeah. to do. So, uh, you know, isn't it some of the big names though? It's uh, Darius Dinesh tonight. It's Darius and the Fat Boy and the Fat Guy. The big yeah. thing that makes you. Oh, I noticed in the Sun today is saying, "Vote for me because of my mu musical talent, not because I'm huge." And you feel sorry for me? Yeah, well, that's good. Mm. I think that's right. But he's, he's he has got a great. Darius, know. I noticed he shaved his beard off. He looks. He's a, he's a new man. He looks slightly laughable though. He's got quite a weak chin. He's having a laugh. Well, he's dissing Darius. For I'm his not looks. claiming to be a pop star. Well, wow. Oh, can you feel the love in the room? Yeah, that's a little song. No, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, my favourite all the way through has been the little fellow with the star. I'd like Darius to get. You know, yeah, I think he's. It's almost certain he's going to win. I don't think I there's think any excitement. So. Or that Welsh girl who was very good. Oh, yeah. The one that made Pete Waterman cry. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, uh, she was good though, wasn't she? she yeah, was good, they're yeah. great. They're they're really good. Um, but you know, it'd be nice to see Fatty. Get some he's too long. I mean, he's just a weird shape, though. It's, it, it, it turns my stomach, and I'm one to talk. on. No, I know. He's just, you know. He's just doing his job. It's, you know, glandular. Yeah. Nice greed. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, he's got a good voice, and, and why not? We've good had, luck to him. We've had Demis Roussos in the charts. Yeah. Alison Moyet. There's not been a fatty for a while, has there, who's been a big star? Uh, I mean, Moyet may well have been the last one. Um, Jer Jerry, what's it? She sorted herself out after becoming famous. She was pretty big, wasn't she? Who? Jerry Halliwell? Yeah. She, yeah, she was never a bloater. Have you seen this bloke off Pop Idols? <laughs> yeah. It's like he's got three Jerry Halliwell strapped to his waist and then wearing a big coat over the top. <laughs> to smuggle them in. Yeah, exactly. To a, to a no Halliwell zone. I reckon he's- I tell you what he's gonna do, I reckon he's gonna take it off <laughs> and it's just a big foul outfit and it was like to prove, you know, the prejudice of the world. Yeah. Alright? Yes. Hey. And how come that little fellow with the starter doesn't start when he's singing? Hold yeah. on. Hold on. I know that's cleaned up actually. I, I bet she's not even Welsh. <laughs> exactly. Steve.
about twenty past two, the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's still there. The Christmas ads have come on, I notice. They're on now. And I noticed, I was watching last night, watching the telly last night, and, um, do you think that the, uh, advertising executive for Cabra's Roses Chocolates just comes in once a year and they go, what you got this year? And he goes, what about some workmen and some old ladies singing, thank you very much, thank you very, very much, yeah. just shot in a street somewhere? Yeah, that'd be fine. It worked last year. Yeah, pretty much. Every, so that's been going like, like since I can remember. They've never, I've never seen a, another advert for Cabra's Roses except there's, that. Exactly. Well, there's certain things that conjure up Christmas, like oh, you, you, you got your turkey and all that, and yeah. you, got your, you got your roses. Yeah. Walrus. Walrus. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got all, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Pizza. <laughs> Pizza. Walrus. <laughs> Drink driving. <laughs> Oh dear, I can't, sorry, I forgot what I went in for. Um, <laughs> what were we doing? We were right. doing something. Be careful, there's a lot of money involved here, yeah. Steve. <laughs> oh, you can't don't, don't, don't stitch me up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, I was reading the paper this week that, uh, Charlotte Church, yeah, you know, a little kind of singing sensation, she's been slagging off the firemen who've been, um, salvaging people and, and no, and stuff. No, she hasn't been slagging yeah. them off. Well, Be apparently, I, no, what but I saw the news, say? I saw the news that she's, uh, apparently, and she claimed that she'd be misinterpreted. Right. But the new Channel 5 News thought this was a big enough story to say that Charlotte Church had been, um, saying that the September 11th tragedy had been blown out of proportion. Right. Uh, she's been just slagging off the firemen. No, but that's what they said. They said that she, f she felt that they, they were being held as kind of heroes and they were just doing their job. Right. Oh, well, that is, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a little bit stupid to say anyway, a little bit insensitive and, you know, yeah. But it's sort of, because it's like, did you read about- well, why, why do you care? Why does anyone care but who's what she her? thinks about September 11th yeah. anyway? It's the same as those things like, during a presidential election, or, when well, I'm actually, it's, 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 these things they picture, Billy Piper says, I've always voted Labour. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna go, go, whoa, oh, hold on, hold on, mate, from steps, he's a conservative, hold on, what's going on? Yeah. I don't know if he is or not. I'm, 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 I don't know, well, I know just, that, um, uh, You know, that was just an example, I don't know, I don't know what either of them vote, to be honest. All right, let's not get into it. Faye and, Faye and Claire from Steps are both BNP members. I can't. I remember reading that somewhere. That's but so I not true. I that is so certain. untrue. He takes that back certain. now. I cannot be certain. Right. I think that is misread. definitely untrue. I read it on the net, and it's often wrong on the net. Right. Definitely. Definitely. He's going to retract that now. Definitely. Aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm saying. I'm saying. I, it's almost certainly untrue. I read it on the net. All oh, right. Yeah. And those things are always untrue. Okay. All right. He's dissed the net now. Yeah. You dissed oh the net. I can't you, believe it. Did Let's you dig ourselves out of this hole now. Well, Blue, uh, now I definitely can quote this because yeah. I read it in the sun. Yeah. Blue were being uh, interviewed by, uh, you know, Blue the pop band Blue. All rise. Have you bought that album yet, Rick? I imagine that would be on your Yeah, no, I like it. One for the money and the free ride. ride. Yeah. Anyway, Blue um, were being interviewed by the sun for when they were on a web chat by uh, the lovable Dominic Mohan. Yeah. And uh, for some reason they got around to September 11th and one of the members of Blue said, again, church like. Yeah. Um, I thought he's been blown out of all proportion. What about all the whales and elephants that are dying oh, every yeah. day? And the other band were going, shut up. Yeah, shut they were going, it's funny, they gave but a transcript of it going, shut they, up. They had to do a, um, a retraction, he said, sorry, I didn't know, oh. Yeah, that was it, he said, I'm, I, I, obviously I'm very passionate about whales and elephants, and uh, perhaps, perhaps a bit misplaced. All the proceeds that I'll receive from our next single, I'm going to give to the September 11th Foundation. Yeah, and then he went, can I give some to the whales? No, <laughs> you've done it again. <laughs> done it again. Don't, don't worry about the whales. But this is what I mean, it's, why are people asking the members of Blue? Yeah. You know, or Atomic Kitten, what yeah. they think about September the 11th. I know. They should just be working in a chippy, those people. They're lucky, <laughs> they're lucky to be on the telly. <laughs> The, set, the, the Atomic Kitten Girls, really, I mean, do they not look like they should be in a chip shop? <laughs> or just uh, hanging around outside an offie drinking diamond white They will cider? be soon, they will be soon. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Although Hearsay's new single, I've dissed Hearsay before, but they've come out with a, a you know, a little poppy thing. I think Can I suppose do. you, Rick? I Go prefer on. Liberty. I prefer Liberty as well. Yeah, a little bit funky, a little bit with more yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, Anyway, XFM 104.9. Once again, our opinions on current <laughs> pop bands, yeah, if yeah, you'd like uh, to have your, uh, Hold on, though. Go on, shoot. Isn't it about time for... One, you know, a hip hop track. Have yeah. we got it? Can you sing it? Song for the Lovers would be good. Song oh, for the Lovers. Oh, I'll do that now. Oh, the song for the Lovers. Now, this is a beautiful song. It's by Simon and Garfunkel. It's only one minute 49 long. It's it's called April Come She Will. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful little song. Isn't See, I'd quite like to put out a compilation like Song for the Lovers, maybe, you know what I mean? But I'm worried. Obviously, the title's ironic. We're taking the mickey out of those things. But quite serious about the, all the songs we play. Yeah, exactly. I'm worried about it, people perceive it a bit like Simon Bates' R-Tune album yes, or yeah. something. Steve Wright's Sunday Love Songs. Yeah, yeah. But, um, lovely. All. Yeah. When you think that you listen to like, some dance track, you buy it and it's like five minutes long, the same thing, repetitive beats. Yeah. And then you hear that, a minute and a half. Classic. Do you know what I mean? Hey, have I made my point, Rick? I think, I I've think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the youngsters yeah. are dying. If anyone knows what my point was there, please <laughs> give us a Yeah, call. phone in and he's made it well. <laughs> yeah. Carl, have you got some, what have you got lined up for us? Some R.E.M. I don't oh, know about the, the, oh. 
Strokes on XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Steve Merchant, Cheers. Carl Pilkington. The K-Man. Well, it's, uh, time for the- well, I think people wait for this now. I never knew, really, since I was doing the show, that I actually had a bit of a knack for film reviews. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because- I discovered I'm trying talent, to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably- probably be asked soon by Barry Norman or Jonathan Ross to do something on that sort of thing, or maybe my own film, mm, so mm, I don't mm, know, mm, mm, TV or- The anyway. clock's ticking, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, okay, th this week I've chosen, uh- Well, wait uh, a minute, let's play the jingle. Okay. The film review and that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Ricky yeah. Gervais. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, here we go. This week I've chosen My Left Foot. Right. Okay. Now, My Left Foot is a film about a bloke called Daniel Day-Lewis, who's all mental, except for, um, his left foot, right? But, and he has arguments, I can't remember, he has arguments with his dad, so I wasn't watching it properly, but he, even though he's mental apart from the foot, he does stuff with the foot that we could, we're not, you know, could do all over, and he uses that to his best, I think he might write a book or something, off paint. And the moral of this story is, you know, even if you're, you've only got a foot that works, you can still win prizes because it won the Oscar. Okay. Um, am I right in saying that you're bringing a book out of these collected, maybe for the Christmas market? I think I might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen the great, great films reviewed, sort of, you know, what with, with, it's a different, it's a different outlook on it. Mm. And mm, it, a different approach. I'm just, yeah. I don't just sort of like stray. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an approach that doesn't really use grammar. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which you don't see that often <laughs> in film reviews. Um, but no, once again, what would you give it out of ten? Uh, I just, uh, I didn't really concentrate, I can't remember a lot okay. about it. But it won a, an Oscar, so, I think it won an Oscar or summer, so nine. Okay. <laughs> Don't go, that was My Left Foot, which is probably available on sell through video, maybe in a bargain, uh, bin. Five ninety nine, probably on TV this Christmas, that's to be confirmed. More than okay. that, we've made some great hits and great oh, songs, haven't we? We've had some great features, a new feature, that film sounds good. Looking forward to that. That, that, that run week. and run. Yep. Um, song for the Lovers, if there any record companies out there, the one I put out, a compilation song of my Songs for Lovers, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's good. A anyone who wants me to do a film, anything, any film you want. Yeah, uh, reviewed. Yeah, reviewed, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would finish the sentence. Yeah, no, ideally. Because oh, it, it was otherwise, it was anyone who wants me to do a film. Well, of course, oh, being okay. the top actor, yeah, you'd have sure, probably appeared in a film. Sure, sure, okay, yeah. Um, and that... <laughs> totally that, good, yeah. Okay. Well, you're running out of steam, I can you're tell. You're running out. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Carl, have you seen it yet? I know you probably haven't, Rick. Cliff Richards' video for his new single. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's bad, Shot. isn't it? I, I saw it on Lorraine Kelly in the morning, Sky One, great yeah. show. And, um... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. It's it's he's done a version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but oh, he's combined that. No. He's combined that with um, uh, what's it? It's uh, oh what a oh what a wonderful world. I wasn't really yeah. listening. I was looking at the pictures. And yeah, yeah. It's what a wonderful yeah. world, and uh, combined with Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So right. he's done a so two classic songs, two songs mm -hmm. that have been done definitively yeah. by artists in the past. He's tried to what combine them last with a one? kind of Yamaha keyboard sound in the background. What was his last year's one? It was um, Lord's Prayer. Prayer with uh, Over the Old Lang Syne. He's just obsessed with combining two songs. Like they're not good enough as they are. People get bored. We better combine them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like That's a like a mega mix, like a cliff mega mix. And you're right, the video is unbelievable. It's him flying through. It's all kind of sort of two D animation, mm. kind of almost sort of a collage of of uh, buildings and high rise flats and that. Kids see him floating by. Yeah. They wave. They point to each other. They can't believe they're like, There goes Sir Cliff. They 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 go. Who's that? <laughs> exactly. He was around in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's just he's got a little one dimensional cliff with a kind of angelic glow right. flying through the sky. Just bringing happiness to people as he sings. Oh, he does. His his real face kind of uh, okay, every so often kind of appearing. I wonder singing. where his real face is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's one of the worst songs and one of the worst videos I've ever seen. I mean, I know people slag off Cliff and it's an easy target, but he actually deserves it because he's shameful. Um, yeah, he's embarrassing. So, yeah. yeah, he's embarrassing. I mean, and he's arrogant. Uh, well, everything's a disguised boast. I mean, I, you know, I like Devil Woman. I like Miss You Nights. I liked Wired for sound, it, and I like tall speakers and small speakers. You know, <laughs> you know, I like, you know, I like all sizes of speakers. You know that. You'll you'll vouch me on that. Yeah. yeah. And he sang about it, which is good. And you know, I'm often wired for sound, right? Carrie doesn't live here anymore. Where's she gone? She's just another message on the payphone wall. It's a story. But lately, I haven't had a lot of time for him. Awful. I remember he was on something on uh, one chat show, and uh, I think it was Dez or Michael. Um, asked for someone, and uh, I said, uh, so you've asked me, he said, yeah, he said, well, everyone um, knows that Elvis sold more records uh, after his death 
than when he was alive. Little dig there against Elvis. He goes, yeah. Well, um, I've just overtaken his record for sales in the UK. Right, so he sets up that Elvis, Elvis is only selling because he's dead. Yeah. And anyway, I've still beaten him in the UK. <laughs> and I yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and where'd you get, and where'd you get the quiff from and the way to sing? Where'd you get that from, Cliff? Mm. Where, do, where did you think of that? But it's those people who, he's just desperate for the credibility that he's never gonna have. I like it when he went around last year going, they're not playing my record, they're not playing my record, they're not playing, oh, go on, play it. Number one. Yeah. Ha. Full day. It was number one. The yeah. Millennium Prayer. I know. Yeah. Well, it was, you know, it was the Millennium, wasn't it? It was, but I don't know who's buying it. I mean, I know, but you seem to claim it's some kind of like six year old women, but they're not. Yeah, are they is, yeah. really a commercial force now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Carl seems to know that. Well, like when you're born, you're a little baby, wrinkly and stuff. When you get older, you, you sort of morph into a baby again. And you go through the same phases. So when you're young, you buy singles. You get old, you've got nothing to do all day. You've got all your pension money. What will I buy? Cliff Richards on the telly. Here's my video, buy me song. You see, that started off as quite a sensible point, because I actually think they do it. But what was all that alien stuff <laughs> about when you're born, you go wrinkly and you go wrinkly again? So it's like, sometimes you mix like normal things that human beings say with I don't know what. Well, look, when you're a baby, you've got a little bald head, no teeth, you get old, what happens? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a philosopher? You're an official <laughs> philosopher. Because, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. <laughs> oh, Carl, play a record. You're a gem. We're nearly through. We are indeed. We've had a little bit of chat, we've had a few laughs, we've had a few tears. We have indeed. We've, yeah. uh, we've, we've, we've introduced a new feature. Looking forward to that next week. Yeah, so it's, it's just going to be wall to wall features, isn't yeah. it? It's going to yeah. be, oh. Well, I had an amazing. idea for a feature which you didn't seem to like, which what? was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Well, explain it. And yeah, something well, old, an old song, something yeah. new, a new song. Yeah. Something borrowed, a cover version. Yeah. And something blue, just a melancholy and beautiful song. Right, okay, but does it have to be all four or can it be anyone? No, it's all four. You can play that over the course of the show. Or maybe just have oh. a set four songs in a row, and that's that section. So, so that so like a feature would be like this is either an old song or like a new song. Yeah, that's yes, good. I think we've done that a few times. No, it's not. It's we've not covered that. that. Well, what's the difference? Play. Oh, I'm playing a song from a film. Just because you give it a title, it's just a song from a film. You could play that anyway, couldn't you? Brilliant. <laughs> it's all you, nonsense. You see, cheers, Carl. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, my ideas are good, aren't they? Because mm. they're not only sort of accessible, but there's a little bit of depth there. I think it's. Fair enough to let him have his little feature at the end of the show, though. Just, you know what I mean? Give him happy the song for the cool. lovers. Come Excellent. Well, that's, yeah, but that's not till after song two by Blair. I remember the days when Carl didn't even want to be on the air. I remember the days when he wasn't, he was told by the establishment that he wasn't allowed to talk on the air. And now it's like he's, as far as he's concerned, he's a third member of the team. He's protected by yeah. me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Song two by Blur. We're running out of time. It's five two. Just got time for Steve's song for the ladies. Wedding present, Rick, from the album uh, Saturnalia. I think it's pronounced like that. And it's track three, Dream World. A song Looking forward for the to ladies. it. Ash, Ash there's a star on XFM 104.9, five past one. That means it must be well in. <laughs> five minutes in to the Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, he's here as well. Yep. Well, we've got some great tunes lined up, haven't have we? we? We've got Eminem, have we've, we? got, we've got Coldplay, Oasis, we've got Brilliant. De La Soul, Chemical Brothers, Dr. Dre, Garbage, R.E.M., The Manics, we've got sure. Muse, we got Feeder, yeah. we've got some classic I mean, you've said all those hits. names, Rick, but the chances of us actually playing all of those are quite slim. We might not get to them if we talk too much. And obviously we'll obviously drop a couple of those to play our own tracks as well. Yeah. Well, they are own tracks. Yeah. You well, know. well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into that now. Right. <sighs> Here's Eminem. Eminem, the real Slim Shady. Now, even though that sort of record is, is you know, relatively recent, and yeah. it's, you know, it's quite hardcore. What's going on about, you know, subject matter that is, that is adult, mm, really, certainly. And it's quite aggressive and it's cool and it, but he still managed to make it sound like a novelty record. It is, yeah. So, I mean, it's like a little thing. I know that's the intention, and that's good. But yeah. I mean, I think uh, I think it's nice that he's got a nice little tune. It could be like um, a little cartoon figure. Here comes Flumpy McMump. <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. Do, 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 but the only is there is isn't there like a video you can get now, which is a cartoon Slim Shady, The Adventures of Slim Shady. Really? Because I know there was The Adventures of MC Hammer, the cartoon animated series, which sadly I never got to see. And New Kids on the Block, I think. The maybe. cartoon went a bit mad and started set, you know spending a lot. Yeah, of exactly. Money exactly. And it was, it was, you know, MC Hammer now apparently he's like he tours on the kind of religious music scene. Does he? Yeah, he's gone sort well, of he was always, religion. wasn't he always at a preach or something, or started in gospel or something? Was he? Yeah, I think so. Because he used to 
yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just assumed he was quite he was off the streets. He used to keep a lot of Bibles in his big trousers. <laughs> yeah. So he could go around giving it to poor people. Yeah. Well, apart from the great music we've got lined up, Steve, we've got, obviously, our, our regular features. Sure. We've got, uh, my classic film review. Always looking forward to that's that. That's already getting a little bit of, uh, you know, attention. From who? Wow, just various people. Go on, name some. Well, I can't name them what, by name or just... Yeah. Uh, so, oh God, what's that one? Oh, Scorsese. <laughs> right. You want me to talk about <laughs> yeah. one of those films? Okay, good. Yeah. You going to talk about one of his today? Yeah. No. No. Wait, no what we've we got like Spielberg. Right. Going to do a Spielberg film. Okay. Uh, we've got um, that film sounds good. Yeah. And that's not my film review. That's where I take a a track off a soundtrack of a classic film. Yes. And it's a great track, and I go, oh, that film sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. So <laughs> yeah, because it sounds yeah. good. Do you see what I mean? But don't please don't be confused and think that that's the film review. No. I hate people to no, think no, that. No, 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 no. That's because, why I wouldn't want. Yeah, yeah. Happen. We've got a song for the lovers. We've got a song for the ladies. Yeah, I'm going to be playing a hip hop track. It's it's called the class. It's called the the hip hop track. It's called uh, Steve says hip hop hooray. <laughs> Pop right. That's not bad, it's, is it? Oh, we're just, just brilliant. Come on, yeah. if there's anyone listening, like you know, um, Sarchi and Sarchi or Macan Eric's and whatever, you know, those people that do you know, advertising, then we are the people. We we're the come, people. Man. We can we can market. We'll market anything. Maybe you're a, a two bit band. You want to email in or something? You know, yeah. just say how can we publicise our music? Yeah. We'll well, I mean, if work. we were marketing, say a, a band, we wouldn't say this is a two bit band. No, that'd be, <laughs> no, that'd be wrong. Was we'd that we'd say this is a yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd say this is a brilliant band. They're going, uh, the, They're going from places. the excellent. I like it. It's, it's always the same reviews. They. It, it's sort of like um, Mark Goodyear, they go, inevitably. They go, uh, um, the excellent single by Coldplay, Yellow. He goes, oh, Yellow, that's Yellow by <laughs> exactly, Coldplay. Yeah. Why do they do the bit that says Yellow? We yeah. said it just to yeah. show it. Like, I want to see something else in the song, maybe, maybe the mid late. Yeah, it would always be the new, the brand new excellent album from Travis, featuring the hit single Sing, 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 Sing. That's, that's the brand sing. new album from Travis. It features <laughs> twelve other new tracks and Sing, Sing, Sing. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well done. I'd buy it. No, I would. <laughs> Based uh, on that's that. about that's all the features we've got, isn't it? That's all the stuff we lined up. We were probably gonna, I don't know, probably wrap it, wrap it on about other stuff. Yeah. Carl, unless I'm very much mistaken, we've got something to give away. Is that right? The K man's with us, of course, pressing the button. <laughs> yeah. KP. Yeah, right, right. K man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Pilkington. We have oh, no, can I just say there's nothing funny about that name? Just straight, <laughs> no, straight away. Seriously. Let's, let's clear that up straight away. You know, the idea that people are laughing. You you, so in school, they go through the register, Anderson. They'd go through a well, Camfield, Sturgis, Sturgis. Well, no, it wouldn't go to Sturgis yet, would it? No, she wouldn't be there, would she? Well, no, P's before S, uh, S isn't it? No, she just wouldn't be at school. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be out too busy in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Pilkington. <laughs> okay, settle down. There's nothing funny about Pilkington. What's up with it? It's Pilkington. Pilkington. <laughs> yeah. Sounds a bit like plonker. Yeah, or pilchard. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, we've got, we've got tickets for I don't Kane. think anyone's ever mocked the name before. I think we're the first ones to do it. Oh, we're brilliant, we are. I don't think people you know, up north figured that out, that it was a funny name. <laughs> well, it probably isn't up there, is it? Because they've all got names like, like, like Ramsbottom. Yeah. Wilkinson, Pilkinson. Piddle Trent Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Oscar Piddle Trent Hyde, what are you doing? You're late. Anyway, Gervais. Well, all right. Okay. No, that's an exotic it's name. It's a, a bit French. French. It's a bit he pays your wages. Blimey, here he comes. I'm going to go at the star of the show. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. Do you want to play a record and get back to it? We've got tickets to give away, that's what we're saying. Carl, what's the tickets? People want to know what the tickets are. After this record. Clever. <laughs> Shinobi versus Dragon Ninja. That's what I like about sort of rock and roll, that just, you know, sings, tells a story about everyday things <laughs> yeah. you know about. You Shinobi know. versus Dragon Ninja. Yeah, <laughs> Was experience. there any reference to Shinobi or the Dragon Ninja in the song? I wasn't listening. I wasn't really paying attention, but I'm assuming that some of that screaming was about Shinobi and the Dragon. I don't know who won. If anyone knows who won out of the Shinobi and the Dragon Ninja. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's like a trilogy. Maybe they sort of get together in one. Then the second single, there's the fight, right, like sure. the mid thing in the film. Because mm. I don't know about film structure, because I do a film review. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and then the, the final one uh, is, you know, the the, the outcome. two of them pairing up against maybe a, a larger villain. A oh, Godzilla type. Maybe. That's uh, that's interesting. Mm. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Okay, well, uh, they do. Lost Prophets. Were, <laughs> and they haven't um, written it yet. Are the Lost uh, Prophets uh, English? Are they British? What's the deal? Who are the Prophets? Pilks. Who's the Profs? Pilky. Um, uh, yeah, I think they are, yeah. yeah. What? What was the answer? What was that? Are they English or, or American? I'd say they're American. Just have a guess? <laughs> Why do you just say I don't know? <laughs> so trying to fool us. <laughs> KP again, trying to deceive us. KP, you were going to tell us, Pilkey, you were going to tell us, Pilchard, you were going to tell us <laughs> what... What tickets are anyway? But it worked for me, see, because when I was younger, yeah. I had a mobile disco. Brilliant, so did I. And, um, it was me and my mate, Colin Makin, and the disco is called Pilkey's Making Music. That's brilliant. I mean, that's genuinely brilliant. 
Pilk is making music. Guess what? When I first started the Mobile the Disco, this was when I was about 14, we just, we didn't really go at tour and we just would do it for like people's parties and stuff. We were called the Rock and Roll DJs. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> we drew oh, it on God. some, uh, on some sort of see-through paper and put a light behind it. Rock uh, and Roll DJs. My first yeah. uh, disco, I had uh, two nights a week in this pub. Well, you run a disco? Yeah, this pub near King's Cross, right? And, uh, <laughs> it was just their records, right? And, um, every, I had to play a, this, this, a uh, number of songs every, time the same time we so all the locals all drunk with <laughs> dancing and everything one of them was um american pie by don mclean right and they just sing along all the words yeah. sort of drunk it's about, about seven minutes long <laughs> yeah yeah the other one was baby jane by rod stewart nice. if i didn't play that i'd get lynched <laughs> and what was the other one there was another one that i always had to play um oh, it was a it was a ballad oh, i have to remember that but yeah but do you, so carl do you think and maybe ricky as well do you think you know much about djing for like you know the sort of uh, the wedding party or maybe oh, someone's yeah. 18th oh really mm. okay let me just uh, offer a little Test. hypothesis for Go you then. then um all right the buffet's been served right yeah. people have done some speeches yeah. like it's a wedding do yeah um so you've already played some records early on you've stopped for food yeah you've just played some light backing music in the background while the food's been served you want to get the party rocking again what do you kick off with it depends it depends i've already got it down to two or three records okay i'd like to hear what they are well i've got it down to uh um earth wind and fire right that'd be great it's, you know if there's you know depending on uh or you want to go a bit more than i'd i'd probably start off with sort of will smith well careful rick i gotta bear in mind it is a is a wedding do so there's people from age eight to eighty you got cake right. every market okay Carl, uh, what about you see this was back in 88 so yeah kylie depend yeah yeah can I tell you what the definitive track is? Go on. Oh, what a night! Thank you, Valley in the Four Seasons. Ding, ding, ding. People don't realise what it is exactly. It's straight away. Ding, ding, ding. Bang, down, 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 down. I can't actually play it, but uh, the oh, what a night! Mm. Late December, back in '60s. That leads you straight into a seven-inch medley, and everyone's loving that. I'm thinking Bee Gees. There's going to probably be some kind of ABBA track, Dancing Queen, all going to storm. I, well, you're you're turning your noses up. I can tell you this: that we got bookings endless. People are going, "You're amazing." I don't know how you do it. I wouldn't have got up. I would have sat there. Well, you might be because you're one of those grouchy, one of those kind of moody teenagers. Oh, I'm not going to dance to this. I'll yes. tell you, the old ladies would have been up. The people with a decent, decent bit of musical taste will be up. No, the Ricky first Gervais person to up. get up is a fat lady in a dress with bad ankles and a and a little a little kid who's got problems and he's in a little DJ. See, the and problem with you two is you're not catering to the market. You're trying to be all sort of bohemian and kind of off off you know teach people about music and stuff. There's no place for Kylie, not at a mobile disco. Far too avant garde. All right, kick it in. Grease Mega Mix. Play um, got play a record. Come on, Eileen. Have you got Come on, Eileen? Play that. What are you gonna play? Love Shack. Coldplay. Excellent. Yellow. Well, you never. It's the you. excellent single by Coldplay. It's Yellow. Oh, Yellow. That's Yellow by Coldplay. That was the stunning new single from Coldplay, Yellow. All the way back to 1999. When was it? 2000. No, 99. Was, was it? it? No. Was it? About that. I didn't realise so many people were fans of the Lost Prophets. Everyone's been phoning in, emailing in, telling us they were from Cardiff. Yeah. Welsh band. Now, are you going to tell us what tickets you've got, Carl? What to, what have we got to give away? Tickets for... Now, we kept the secret. We said, no, tell us on air, so it's a big surprise. This is going to be... If this is going to be really rubbish, is it? This is... This, this, whatever these tickets are, right, is a testament to how much they rate us here at XFM, how much they rate our show and care about us. What tickets have we got to give away? A top show featuring Mickey Gervais and Steve Merchant and Pilkington. What tickets have we got to give away? Tickets for K-Fest. <laughs> right, go on. What's that? It's like uh, a rock thing that's going on tonight. Right. If you're, you know, if you're into the, that Welsh... Welsh right, well, no, name some of the bands. Uh, name some of the bands. Uh, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Right. That's one of the bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Lanigan. Who? Not Lanners. <laughs> Is Lanners playing? He's not really. Yeah. Mark Lanigan really playing there? I think so. God, who's that? What? Who's that? <laughs> Who is Lanigan? Is he someone you went to school with? <laughs> Who is Mark Lanigan? Who else is Who on? is Mark Lanigan? Is he the promoter? <laughs> Is he? Is he? Is he head security? Is this in a pub in Camden? <laughs> <laughs> it got, it got, you got nine. We're giving away tickets to, to the K-Fest. Hold on, let's have a look. This is, this is the enemy. Mark, Mark Lanigan, Masters of Reality. Right, okay. Who else? We got Niall, we got Mark Lanigan. Niall? Who else? I can't pronounce this one. Oh, let's have a look. That's good. Bethlehem or something? Bethlehem? Behemoth. Behemoth? Behemoth, is it? Let me see. God, no one can oh. read. I expect it from a northerner, but not from a university-educated man like you. Do oh they? yeah, 
Let me have a look. Where are we then? I can't even find on the page. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Anyway. Ne behemoth. Yeah, behemoth open but proceedings. But I just thought something. We're not really giving those away, are we? Surely we're asking <laughs> some sort of financial reward for them. <laughs> right, okay, right. Um, is there a competition no, or let's something? Let's just... South Carolina Death Metalers, Nile. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm okay, thanks. We've got, we got, I've got, we got a pair of tickets to give away? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, if you want to go to, um, K-Fest, it's the Mean Fiddler, uh, Charing Cross Road, and that's, um, tonight, is it? Mm -hmm. The tickets would be 750, but we're giving away for free. Um, Why don't we say we're giving away for a fiver? No. Still the saving. Uh, but I'll tell you what, can, um, if you can call in, what's the number? Oh. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three. Yeah, and if uh, the the question is, because because they're quite sought after. There's big names here, like Niall and uh, and um, that uh, what's his name? Lanigan. Lanigan's on. Um, the question is, who wants to go? Yeah. So if you can call and answer that question, who wants to go to that? Then you could be one of the lucky winners. <laughs> right. After this, some great chat and music. <laughs> could you also explain who Mark Lanigan is? <laughs> Still De La Soul. Watch out. Well, we're wrong. The lines went mental. It's amazing, isn't it? So that they, they, and they knew all about them, where they were from, what they were like, and uh, the tickets. Death metal is just something that's like, it's obviously passed me by, but it's obviously huge. It is huge. It's sort of huge without being sort of in the public eye. Yeah. Famous, I think it's probably the the only real alternative out there now, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. everything else is sort of mainstream. There's no alternative music, even, even hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Slipknot kind of have snuck in, haven't they? Because they yeah, didn't, they went to number one or something. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. It still gets people saying, you're no son of mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you're probably not. You're probably a daughter or something. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. You can't, it's I can't like, really so tell. People who phone up about the, the, the heavy metal, though, they always sound such nice people. Yeah. The women always sound attractive. You know if you meet them, though, they're like eight foot tall. I know the fact we, that we, we suddenly sound like two old ladies on the bus. <laughs> and you know what? I spoke to one of them rappers and he was as nice as pie. <laughs> Helped with the shopping and everything. I thought he was going to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am I am 27 years old now, Rick. 28, <laughs> yeah. according to Carl. <laughs> yeah. Talking of my birthday, you know, we, we did a, we, it was my birthday a couple of weeks back. Yeah. And I, we were talking about my, the stuff that my dad had given me, his presents yeah. in the past. And anyway, my sister told me that he'd, he'd listened to some of it on the car driving up and he was a bit quite upset and he hadn't Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but it was all, it was all affectionate. It was done it? with it affection, but it was like, we were slagging off his, his gifts, which were awful. I oh, know. Yeah. He's probably listening again. Well, possibly. That on happened the, to me on, once. On I'm, oh, I remember, um, telling a story on, uh, on XFM, and I'll tell you the story, okay, uh, you, you've heard it, but I'll tell you the story. Um, well, it was, I used to live, um, in, uh, just a little one-room sort of bedsit, um, with my girlfriend, sort of, in, uh, it was sort of the late 80s as well, and, uh, it was, it was just awful, it was one room, and we had a bed, and it's sort of like, um, uh, the kitchen was the bedroom, so I bet, oh, it literally... The like, kitchen was the bedroom? Yeah, it was right. the bed in there, and then like a, like a, it was just one room we had, that's all we could afford, yeah? Like and so we mind. had, yeah, and so, um, you know, the, the, you're sleeping in bed, your head was by the fridge, and the, the sink was by your feet, and you had to go out and down the stairs to a communal toilet, so I, obviously, I'm a man, I could just pop out of bed, on tiptoes, the sink was quite high, and have a little wee in the middle of the night. So for him, that's fine. Into so that's, the into the sink, not the into fridge. Into the sink, into the sink. Yeah. yeah. So that that was that was fine. And uh, sometimes I would just <laughs> hear Jane go, "Oh, at least run the tap afterwards." <laughs> and I go, "All right, I'll run the tap." Right? <laughs> and I just remember once. Um, go and at least take the dishes out first. Because <laughs> I used to sort of lift, if it was just full of dishes, I used to lift them up and sort of like aim underneath it and then, right, it was, it was, it was quite hygienic. It was, you know, I, but... What do you mean it was quite <laughs> hygienic? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was In tired. In what world is like quite I was, hygienic? I was tired and drunk. And, uh, uh, yeah, and it was, it was just a, oh, it was a horrible place. And we had mice. You've um, had, you've, you, you urinate quite a lot, don't you? You're quite a pr you have a problem with urination after lot. Well, I worry lot about drink. getting caught. Like on a tube, I have to. Oh, God, oh you know. I, oh, I don't take tubes anymore. Well, I listen case. to my, my dad's advice: is never pass a toilet and not use it because you never Exa know when you might have to use that, one that again. That is exactly mine. You might yeah, not, you might yeah. Not see one for a long oh, time. but anyway, sorry. What I was going to say was, uh, um, Jane's mum was listening. <laughs> What's the last story? When you yeah, that story? and they said, uh, "Oh, had Ricky story that sort of story about." We in the sink. Is you it? No. <laughs> he makes an awful lot up. <laughs> he makes him. an awful lot up. Yeah, it's that, that, that's what we have to say. No, I was joking. You know, I, did, I didn't mean it. So, uh, you know, I think I got away with it. Um, although, she, her mum did watch me every time I went out to the kitchen. When I was, <laughs> yeah. when I was at her house. You're like, yeah, I'm just go yeah. to the, right, Do you want okay. to call me for sandwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If so, just, I'll have it the toilet's over there, Ricky. Yeah. I know. The toilet's over there. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oasis. Don't look back and anger. A classic there. Absolutely. 
from the from the, the height of Britpop. My God, it's mad to think it's a classic now, and I was I there know. at the beginning. I know, I can't believe it. By the way, d urinating isn't bad. It's a good thing. It's getting, you know. No, obviously it's, it's good getting. getting the, the, uh, it's, 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 I'm not saying the urination's a bad thing. I wasn't no. damning the fact that you needed to urinate. It was yeah. the fact you were doing it in the sink. With dishes, you probably exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you know, see, the thing is, in um, you know, there are there are some societies where if you urinate on something, you sort of own that that thing. What society is that? Cats, for example, cats. Right. So I mean, you know, cats are, you know, enigmatic creatures, aren't they? Yeah. Mysterious creatures. I mean, so if I, you know, I, I sometimes I, I mean, I own a lot of things through that. Right. Sinks, <laughs> telephone boxes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Lot, lots of fences. My shoes. Your shoes once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was yeah. chasing you around Robin's <laughs> shoes once. Yeah. You'd be all right around um, jellyfish, because apparently, <laughs> is this a band that's playing tonight? It is a band, isn't it? Actually, it was. I think. They're on yeah. a K fest. Yeah. You know, um, if you get stung by a jellyfish, yeah, uh, we stops it hurting. <laughs> is that true? Mm. It's just for anyone listening. I mean, I, it's probably best to check that maybe on the internet or, or phone a doctor <laughs> before you try that. I mean, because Carl, although Carl has got yeah. a lot of useful information, it's not he's not a medically trained man. Yeah, because because I got in trouble once coming out of the sea at Bogner, running around. People going, "Wee on me, please." Yeah. Please wee on me. We're just running around. I'm got laughing, but yeah. You know. But, uh, have you ever wet the bed? I honestly haven't. I don't, I've never, never wet the bed. Never wet the bed. Never. Okay, let's play a record then. Oh, we did a bit of, uh... Are you, you've wet the bed, have you? Wow, not, not as, not, Go not on. as such. Well, you may as well tell us. Um, well, yes then. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a story attached? Uh, well, I remember once, right? <laughs> God. Were you, was this when you were a child? Sort of. How old? Twenty six. Okay. <laughs> and uh Oh god. <laughs> oh, it's another story involving anyway, right? Once. Just wasn't a sink hammer. Oh god. Come on, Javise. Okay. Well once I went to uh stay, um went down to to Brighton to with um Jane to for a party, her sister's party. And uh we were staying at her parents' house, her parents were away. And uh first of all I got too drunk. I don't. Right. I didn't. I, hadn't, I don't think I'd known him very long. Might have been. And uh, I remember it was a fancy dress party, and I didn't go to fancy dress. But I remember laying on the floor trying to trip people over because I was so drunk. <laughs> that's remember, something that's hilarious if you're drunk. Yeah, imagine Jane going, "Oh, that's my boyfriend. I'm mm. so proud." Mm. To all her family, and then and then uh, we got a cab. I remember I got a cab journey home to her that I didn't remember. And apparently the cab driver going, "Is he all right?" Because I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sick. I'd be sick, Jane. Yeah, he's fine. Then I laid on the bathroom floor, and Jane timed it. It was 45 minutes, me <laughs> singing right by your side by the Arrhythmics. <laughs> and then I went to bed, and apparently, I got up in, in the middle of the night, walked around the bed, and just thought the bed was a toilet. And Jane said, <gasps> Ricky! I went, what? She went, you're pissing on me. I went, well, I don't wait, need to wake me up. <laughs> and then just got back to bed. You urinated on the bed. All right, let's, yeah. Bit of hip hop. Oh man, alive! Hip hop hooray! <laughs> hip hop hooray! Oh, it's the opportunity where Ricky get, uh, Steve gets to play one of his uh, classic hip hop tracks. Something maybe you've not heard before, Rick. Can I just say I actually slightly regret telling a story about me weeing. Yeah, well, it's, it doesn't stop there. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure you've told me more in the past. All right, just go on with the <laughs> hip hop track. Um, <laughs> this is from. I need to just introduce it briefly. It's from a, an artist called Mad Skills, who on this record claims that he has written loads of other people's songs, which I think is true. Uh, the only thing I would say is that the names of the artists he's supposedly written for have been bleeped out. But of course, because it's also a radio-friendly version, all the swearing's been bleeped out as well. So there's a lot of bleeping. But if you can piece it together from it, 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 it will actually be quite a good song. Go on. I'm gonna actually. No, don't you, don't. you don't own it by urinating on yeah, it. Yeah, I am. No, you. Yeah. Put it away. Put, <laughs> oh. Just a little dribble. That is mine now. That cost me over five quid. <laughs> Gorillas rock the house on XFM 104.9, two o'clock, halfway through already. Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, telling really quite embarrassing things that I wish I yes. had now. It makes me look like some sort of mad old you, urinator. No, you just can't handle your drink. <laughs> you can't handle your drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. I can. I can. I just, I just get rid of it in the usual way of excretion via the kidneys, down the urethra, out the end, down the sink. Sometimes a sink. Sometimes a toilet, Carl. <laughs> sometimes a bed. Yeah. <laughs> or your girlfriend. <laughs> you know, it just. Oh, embarrassing things. Um, I remember once, right? Um, I was. I used to love nature when I was about like, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And I remember um going out um with uh, my sister and my brother and uh, their um, girlfriend and boyfriend, like to become their husband and wife. Um, and <laughs> Thanks I, for that. Yeah, you know, just uh, just keeping continuity there. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And uh, I used to get shells and things on the beach, and I used to get anything. I love nature. And I've, once I found, um, I love reptiles as well, and I found this perfect um, uh, snake skin, like a, a grass snake or an adder. And it was, I, I, I absolutely, I couldn't believe my luck. And I was going, look, look, snake. And they were going, okay, put it down. Cause I th and I realised they were a little bit scared of it. They were going, put it down, it's dirty. And of course, I'd torture them a little bit. And then, uh, uh, I thought it was just hilarious, and they made me leave it there, and I told, told mum and everything. And then, much later, when I had some friends when I was about 14 or 15, I was telling this story to embarrass my sister, and uh, uh, I was going, yeah, and she was scared of it. And she went, well, it was a used Johnny. She'd waited that long to embarrass me in front of my oh, friends. God. I'd been running around with a used Jurex, thinking that this is great because they were scared of snakes, and they were oh. going, put it down, it's dirty. No, be careful of the poison. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's isn't horrible. It, it is horrible, isn't it? Have I gone too far again? How could you not realise it was made of rubber? For goodness sake! Well, what? you obviously didn't know anything about nature. <laughs> well, oh, I used to love nature, me. Yeah, the difference yeah. between some skin and yeah, then that, that, this rubber is the, Johnny. Now be careful of the Johnny snake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their little poppy head and their wow. poison. That oh dear! I always remember there was this kid who lived near me once, and this, this bird got run over, and he rushed. It, he said, "I can save it," and he kissed it because he thought he could give it the kiss. <laughs> He thought he could well, give it the kiss all, of life. I thought you meant it was a girl. No, no, no. He <laughs> got run over. And he kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, what, what? He, he, he thought he could give it the kiss of life, but he didn't <laughs> know what the kiss of life was. He just thought you could kiss something and that would bring it back to life. <laughs> I think it was an excuse. I think you're thinking I can't bird. wait for a bird to get run over, then I can <laughs> pretend to be giving it the kiss of life, but really I'm giving it a nice little snog on the beach. I remember beak. he kissed it like that and look, threw it up like it would fly, <laughs> like it would fly away and it just went <laughs> onto oh, the no. floor. Oh, was it dead or? Yeah, it was, it was blood everywhere. It was horrible. Oh no. Yeah. And that, what is he doing now? Uh, he presents he... Uh, Animal Hospital. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know what he's doing. But, uh... He's the worst vet in the world. Yeah. Got struck off. Oh, just leave with all his patients. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Oh, bless him. I just, know. oh no. I killed a fish once. Go on. Um, well, I made a little bow and arrow. I was about, um, eight or nine and I made a, a bow and arrow and you know you, do, you never think uh, I, we had a pond and there was a huge fish in it about um you know uh, eight inches long a huge big sort of like golden orf or something or a carp or something and then um, I was sort of playing and I aimed and I shot it and it went straight through it and floated to the top and I thought oh my god you pierced a fish with, a, with an arrow that's an amazing yeah. shot well it was luck it was pure luck I You're never a native American it. yeah yeah um and uh you know those little things outside you know, in the front garden by the front gate, the little um, sort of four inches by four inches bit of metal, you lift it up and it's sort of like where the drains are if the, you know, the plumbers need to get there or the counts or everything like right, that. Right, right. I dropped it down there and I thought, oh my god, what if that's discovered? What if I have to drain? So I ran loads and loads of journeys in and out of my house, right, to the toilet and back, just taking out um, handfuls of vim and pouring bleach down thinking that I can get rid of this fish before the council dig it up in ten years time and yeah. go, send him to jail. <laughs> yes. Fish yeah. aside. But who do you think, what do you think they would have done? They'd have taken the dead fish and they'd have gone to each of the doors going, does, is this your fish? <laughs> yeah, but I was eight. Fish? You, you don't think- Do you recognise it? either the arrow or the fish? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, yes, it's arrow straight through it. But, um, you know, you don't think when you're eight that it'd be okay. If I, if I can ride this out till I'm twenty, yeah. the statute of limitations on goldfish murder, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it is about, I can't work it out, twelve yeah. years. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that you're was- killer. Carl, yeah. anything embarrassing ever happened to you ever? With what? With animals and Could stuff. Could be animals. I like animals, to be honest. So do I! It was a mistake! No, you know, I thought you were f feeling bad about the fish. Yeah. But really, you were more worried about you being locked up. Well, I felt bad. There was, there was, there was both the law and the moral side of fish death. I mean, we kill yeah. fish all the time, just not usually with a bow and arrow in a back garden <laughs> yeah. in Whitley. You know, <laughs> often the supermarket can lend a hand with that. I used to sell mackerel. Did you? Yeah, I had a pet magpie. Did you? Called Maggie. Oh, you pet magpie. You mean you captured it and didn't let it go away? Yeah. Can't have a pet magpie. But then it, but then it got really vicious. I mean, well, it was right, it's been let me go. What did you keep it in a rabbit hutch? No, it flew around, but it used to just like come to me all the time. But then it started pecking me head and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a pet magpie. That's a bird in the garden. No, no, but I could actually, it, it, I could hold it and stuff. It wasn't scared of me, and it knew it was me. It used to come down from like the the top. It of hated the... you. That's why it wanted to peck you. Is that? Uh, oh. And the other thing. um I always remember being younger and, and like walking walking through the woods to school with my mum and like, I was chasing a butterfly <laughs> and she said she said um she said oh, d don't do that Carl and I said why she cuz they only live a day and I said oh, all right I'll get a dead one in the morning <laughs> <laughs> That's genius <laughs> That's great that's quick thinking yeah. isn't it Oh no oh, that's sweet let's play this oh. 
Wu Tang Clan and Gravel Pit. We love that, don't we? I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Fantastic track. Um, we're talking about embarrassing stories and stuff, and I don't know if I've told this on the radio before. Have I told you, Carl? I'm not sure. But this was when I was working at the BBC. This is not even long ago, and I moved to London, and I was fairly new in London. And I was working at the BBC, and I had this BBC hire car. And I've never told it. If there's anyone listening who works for the BBC, I don't know if I can still get in trouble for it. But uh, this BBC hire car, and it was like I've been ferrying kind of actors and people and production people around all day in this car. And I was driving back. It was quite late. It was about sort of seven or eight. And I was driving back, and I pulled in to get some petrol. We had to fill up the car every day. And I went into this garage to fill up some petrol, and I was there. And this blokes, two blokes came in in a white van, right, they took, pulled into the, in the forecourt and I was filling out the car and they went, hey, do you want to buy a couple of speakers? And I said, yes I do. Yeah. Because I, the, tell you the reason, it was like I was so flattered that they thought I'd be the kind of bloke who would A, need some kind of classy speakers and yeah. B, would like to buy them on the sly. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I thought, yeah, they like the They've seen they, me. They've they seen I look a bit of a hustler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a street sort of guy. You can yeah. see, by the way, I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So they, so they, I, I couldn't believe my luck. So uh, they drove behind the garage, the little sort of garage bit at the back, and I went round there, sort of casually went round there, sort of locked the car, went round there. Uh, <laughs> they went, yeah, they opened the back, you had these speakers in there. I, I said, are you sure these aren't knocked off, mate? He went, no, no. We work for Dixon's. This is a story he spun me. We work for Dixon's, right? And we're delivery men. And if we make a delivery and the person's not there to sign for the goods, then we have to bring them back to the warehouse. But if we can sell them on the way back, yeah. Then that's really good that for Dixon's. That, yeah, Dixon's must love that. And instead of thinking, <laughs> yeah. are you sure some kind of troubleshooter didn't? I mean, did someone go into Dixon's and go, yeah, you're not, you're not getting in the uh, garage for Harvey market. Jones? Exactly. Get a couple of lads in a white van. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so I sort of bought this story, and it, and I was a little bit dubious, and I went, right, let me hear them then. And he wired them up to the car stereo, and boom, 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 they're playing. So it was some groovy hip hop. I was thinking, great, these guys know what I'm into. Yeah. And I, he's giving me the talk and stuff, and. Um, I said, I'm a bit worried these are, these are knocked off. He went, no, listen, I, we got a bloke at Dixon's who can confirm this is fine, right? Phone him up, use my mobile, right? And quote this reference number, right? So I phone out, they go, dee -dee 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 -dee, and I goes, yeah, I go, hi, some guy's here in a garage forecourt trying to sell me some speakers. Just wanted to check. He went, it's fine. I went, should I, should I just read the reference number or whatever? He went, if you want, and X14, and I'm like, yes, yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. You right. know that was, don't you? That was actually <laughs> Mr. Dixon himself. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I'm thinking, well, you know, they sound great. They're yeah. giving me to a, for a knockdown price. I say they were like 400 quid, they were like 200 quid or something. It was a good bargain. I was in the market for some speakers as well. Yeah. So, uh, while they were loading it's them in- It's all kosher. I phoned Dixon. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, phoned yeah, Dixon. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so while they're loading them in the back of the BBC hire car, right? I'm in there paying for the petrol, right? And the guy serving goes, eee. Oh, you're right. He goes, what were you doing around the back with those blokes? Right? Because obviously there's a security cameras filming this whole transaction, right? And, and he goes, what are you doing around the back? And I went, brilliantly, I went, there's some old mates. Some of my mates were just having a chat and that. He went, oh, right, okay. Like, give me obviously the evil eye. So I went back the back. So I'm in the car now and I'm driving with one of the blokes who's in the van with me because I didn't have the money on me. So I had to go to the cash point <laughs> to get the cash, right? So I'm driving with him and the other guy's like following me in the van and he was like a northerner like him and he's giving it all the, all right, yeah, you know. I tell my girlfriend's a DJ. She's got some of these speakers. They're fantastic. Da -da -da, and he's giving me this. And then my mind starts working. Now that I've got a bit of time to think, I'm thinking, wait a minute. This all sounds a bit dodgy. Yeah. It dawned on me, Rick. You, you, you know, fool, are you? You're streetwise. <laughs> exactly. You're streetwise, Steve. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, I was thinking, how am I going to get them home? I've got to drop the car off at the BBC. How am yeah. I going to get these huge speakers back to where I live? And how can I pay for them? Because I've just spent £100 on Find the Lady. <laughs> exactly. With a couple of blokes in the <laughs> exactly. square. Yeah. It seemed like a fair game. <laughs> Some so, of his so friends I, were winning. But so I explained to him, I said, how I can't get them back to like Brixton where I was living at the time. He went, don't worry, give us an extra 20 quid, we'll take them home for you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Deliver it. <laughs> 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 They do a whole service, you see, <laughs> and there's also a backup guarantee. <laughs> Did they have the guarantee, the three month guarantee? <laughs> they didn't. No. But okay. so then, so they say, I said, I'm not sure about that. He went, well, why don't you put them in a cab, send them back, and your housemates can collect it. I was like, oh, no, there'd be no one in. And I was getting, and I was beginning to sort of get a bit conscious of like, maybe this was a bit of a scam after all. So I pulled into like a little side road, and I said, I'm not sure I'm into this now, actually. He went, what are you talking about? It's 200 quid for Paris because it's a bargain. You never get a bargain like this, man. I'm going, not too sure, actually. I don't think I want him. He went, 150 quid, 150 quid, mate, 150 quid. I went, no. He said, 100 quid, 100 quid now to you. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like the kind of work that Dixon's would be doing. Dixon's don't do that <laughs> when I go in. This is it. Yeah. Never, just, Dixon's never negotiate in that way. When, when I go there, I look around and I leave, they go, where are you going? <laughs> exactly. I go, I'm just like, we'll have anything then. Have anything for a So quid. I stopped the car and the white van pulled up behind me with his mates in. Sure. And, uh, 
And I said, can you get him out? I'm not interested. And he went, oh, 100, 100 quid, mate. Oh, you, you, and he was just kind of, you toss her. You, you obviously want some speakers. Duh, duh, duh. He was having a go at me. So I was carrying the speakers out and putting them back in the white van. And he was just shouting at me. He was going, 70 quid, 70 quid. I was like, 70 quid from 200? This is ludicrous. You realise that wasn't Dixon's policy <laughs> exactly. then. Exactly. They don't at usually shout, you toss her as you leave the, <laughs> as you <laughs> leave the shop and walk down Camden High Street. They're exactly. not usually shouting, you <laughs> toss her. You should have sought the offer of, like, the monthly payments they've gone at the moment. <laughs> So, um, so I, I eventually I put them in there and I sort of knocked the deal on the head and I got back in my car and uh, they got, they were in theirs and I could, just looked in the rearview mirror and they were punching the dashboard like with aggression and venom like we let that deal slip through our fingers and I've never been so terrified in my life. I just sat there and I was just thinking, oh my god, all I was thinking now is what if I go back to the BBC and they go, we've had a call from the police, the man at the garage, he saw yeah. you doing a dodgy deal. I love it. Yeah. Well, oh, what, so you do is, what you do is you put the tyre car in a drain in your front garden <laughs> and then go in and out of the toilet just pouring bleach <laughs> down or Ajax and they never know. This is Song for the Lovers. Lovely song there, Song for the Lovers. Absolutely. Neil Young, Man Needs a Made Off the Harvest album. What a beautiful song that beautiful. is. Beautiful. Beautiful strings yep. and everything. Well, you've got a Song for the Ladies coming up. Song for the Ladies later on well, as well. That, yeah. that's, that has set, you know, the standard that's there. Well, absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, were you going to uh, do a film review as well later? We've still got that. Uh, well, I could, do, I could do a film review now because it's, well, like, it's quite a big. I thought you needed to prepare, but no, I mean, no, not. it's quite a big film, and I've seen it, and it is, uh, you know, it's it's a great it's a great film. So okay. I, I hope I can do it justice because it's a very okay. Oh, this week, what film is it going to be? It's going to be Schindler's List. Okay, and are you going to do a jingle for us? Uh, <laughs> Rookie's film review. <laughs> okay, this is a film by Steven Spielberg. Yes. And it, because it's in olden times, it's all black and white and that, except a, a coat that's red. I don't know what happened there. Um, anyway, it's about a, a bloke who's called Schindler. And because there were so many people we wanted to save, he had to make a list to get organised. And, uh, he t tried to save as many as he could. Um, and, the, you know, he ma made him sort of not make the bullets properly on purpose, because he, you know, uh, and, uh, in the end, they gave him a ring, um, it's the same bloke who made E.T. <laughs> okay, your review of Schindler's List, yeah. and as ever, uh, mark out a ten, please. Uh, nine, it was brilliant. You really enjoyed it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, did the fact that it was three hours long bother you? Uh, no. No? Quite like no. that. No. Okay. Watch some of it on Fast Forward. Okay, okay. Um, Carl, have you seen Schindler's List? No, I'm surprised they managed to get all that in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Would that encourage you to see the film? Definitely. Yeah. Okay, what would you give it a mark out of, uh, Ted? Nine. You'd give it nine as well? Mm. Okay, I'll tell you, I... That's red coat effect thing you're going yeah. on about. That's, that's yeah. That's sold it. You like that yeah. idea? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was just some, a, a mistake, apparently. Uh, apparently, yeah. yeah. We just couldn't get all the colour out of it. As I said before, if you've got a film that you'd like to have reviewed by Ricky Gervais, then yeah. email us, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, and I'm sure he can, uh... Or even the, you know, all the, not just, like, um, the people, but what about the ones who make the films? Like, you know, the ones that actually make the film, what are they called? Hollywood? Yes. If they want me to do one, but they're coming out to sort of give it a little bit of a boost. Yeah. You saw me give away the tickets, that was selling. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can, we can sell your product, and we make it look like it's all editorial, but really, if there's a little bit of money involved, I can <laughs> probably give it a nine out of ten instead of four or something. <laughs> I, so, Rick, would you do that without having seen the film? Yeah. That's fine, because they wouldn't even, they could just tell you what was coming up, and then if, you if, it, if they it. said this, uh, give us a good review, and here's 20 quid, yeah. if they go, oh, no, oh, give it, there's no money in it, I'll give it, probably give it a bad well, review, let's just to try be honest. That, that, Rick, can I just try that, because I mean, a lot of people listening w won't be necessarily convinced. Um, Lord of the Rings, let's imagine I've paid you now to, uh, to review the forthcoming film Lord okay. of the Rings. What do you make of it? This is a brilliant film, yep. and even though it's all about wizards and that, and there's people in caves called gonads, um, with beards, Rob, probably Robbie Coltrane's in it, because he's in the other one at the yeah. moment. Um, and there's, uh, it's all swords and stuff, and there's some magic, uh, but it is, the, is actually the Lord of the Rings, not just like, you know, just one of them, he's the Lord of it, and he's, he's excellent in it. <laughs> so, right, Mark out of ten? Nine. Again, very popular film for you. Carl? Less convinced by that one, maybe. That doesn't sound as good as, no. as the other one. Yeah, what, are you gonna give it seven? Mmm. Still give it nine. You still give it nine. Excellent, because we we split it. We split yeah. the money. Okay, yeah. excellent. Good. This is <laughs> the this is the eels. Sorry about that. That was a mistake. A lot of shit that was. But it was too late to get it out of the CD players. Muse and feeling good. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of Muse, but I wasn't quite as venomous in my uh, hatred. Don't worry, we won't play that again. 
Um, no, right. Right. well, let's let's explain the situation in the studio. There's a certain frosty air now because what? we ended up playing Muse. Yeah, it was it was, you know, it was a mistake. Though. Yeah, but it's mm. not that bad. Well, no, it's not. It's not as bad as Ricky what? thinks. It. I admit it's not as bad as that. But I'm standing out of it because I'm not a fan of Muse. I wouldn't play Muse generally. Well, I don't I mean, mind <laughs> Muse generally, but what, I, I hate. Well, that. What you like Muse normally? I hate Muse. Well. I don't hate them. It says the man who bought the Like Funky Ones album. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't play them on XFM. I know, but Muse fits in. I mean, you, you're saying you want to play Radiohead. Fits in, so playing a Nina, like Radiohead, doing a Nina Simone. You... Why do we play Radiohead then? That's what I was saying. We're playing Radiohead, but Muse is like Radiohead. There's not a big difference. <sighs> anyway, we're not going to argue. There is a big difference. Phone in if you... What's the difference between Muse and Radiohead? What's the phone number? What do you mean, what's the difference? What's, well, there they are, let's have a competition. Let's see if p people can tell the difference between Muse and Radiohead. Give the number out. Can't be bothered. Nor can I. So it's left to me to keep the thing afloat. Yeah. That's never good news. Um, I went to see the White Stripes this week, good. if anyone's interested. <coughs> uh, anyone interested in that? Go on, Steve. White Stripes are absolutely amazing. I've heard all the hype. You know, I've not listened to the album. I went along to the gig, got a free ticket. Wasn't even a pound off. It was free. Ten pounds. I could have. I could have sold it outside the gig. I didn't. I went in. Right. Couldn't take along a mate. XFM wouldn't let me. Uh, I went there on my own. You know. Went in there. I had to say I wasn't expecting much. They were amazing. They were absolutely amazing. I have to say this now. For they were the best band I'd seen. Who are like I didn't know it much about or whatever. Like they were a new band. They were the best band I'd seen live since I saw a little band you might have heard of called Oasis for five pounds at Coventry Poly. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a long name for a band. <laughs> and. um it was amazing, and it's a brilliant because it's just the two of them. Obviously, the girl on the drums, the guy playing the guitar. He's got a real kind of rock guitar skill. He really plays it up and down the um, the long neck bit. I mean, I know all about the music and that, the terminology. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. Sometimes he plays like kind of kind of steel with that steel pedal thing on his not steel pedal, the, th the finger thing, the kind of thimble thing that some guitarists wear. I believe it's called a, a guitar thimble. <laughs> I believe is the name for it. And he plays that like old bluesman would play. He plays that sometimes. Old sometimes bluesman. Somebody's he's got like a little electric keyboard thing, or piano, as I believe some people call it. See, and this isn't a review, this is listing the instruments. <laughs> well, alright, alright, there's not many to get through, but there's and some drums uh, yeah. on the guitar. What colour microphones were they? No, I'm glad you asked. Were they SM58s? <laughs> anyway, the point is this. Go on. With just those few simple instruments, they yeah. had this huge sound, a big rocky sound, yeah. quality, kind of bluesy punk with a little bit of, uh, yeah. an edge into it. It was amazing, I have to say, I, I was a huge fan. And so I thought we could play a bit of White Stripes, you know, to we sort could. of commemorate that excellent gig. I saw a band once, right? There was a drummer, had all the drums, <laughs> right. at the bottom. Two of the diddlums once, symbols. Yeah. They were all mic'd up with different microphones <laughs> coming down the loudy speaks. I was at the back, it was still wow, I can hear everything on that. Electrical, really. And a guitar. And a bass. Can I do a like a gig review every week? Like you that do your film review. That'd be good, yeah. Well you just did. Well I'm about you, as well I'm about as well informed about music <laughs> as you are about films. Uh, anyway, I'd, tell me the uh, how do you choose the playlist? It Feeder, just today. Now uh, because we're running out of time, yeah. Because that muse shit we had to play, um, I think I uh, say uh, that's my feature. That PlayStation game sounds good, <laughs> right? Because that's the uh, the main music of the PlayStation Two game, Gran Turismo. <laughs> right. So I, I could incorporate that. Brilliant. Yeah, and I've I've still got to get in a uh, uh, song for um the the you've got to get in song for the ladies. Yes. At the end. Got anything else lined up? Well, I, I just, I mean, it's just that you, I, I've never seen you spiral into such despair after hearing Muse. I mean, well, fair enough, is that they're not a great band. Well, obviously, we have to, you know, there's a bit of a playlist we have to keep to, and we drop the records we don't like, yeah. right, and play the ones we do, and that's fine. And if I don't care for a track, I don't mention it, I don't usually slag off bands, and I know we've got to keep to a playlist, I don't know how they're chosen or anything, but, you know, it's one thing I didn't want to play, it's feeling good. Yeah. And it was already lined up and there was no time, so I was, I was genuinely annoyed. Because I don't mind, like, playing stuff that I wouldn't actually choose myself, that's all right, but, you know, it, 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 you know, we're not completely free played all the time. So the worst thing is I don't want to ever play Feeling Good again. I don't want to ever play Kashin again. Kashin, I don't know what is. I'm thinking of putting a ban on Gorillas. What, anything you like to ban? Basement Jacks. Basement Jacks. Oh, where's your head at? We already where's dropped that. Where's your head We dropped at? that on purpose, didn't we? What else have we dropped today? But this is that's what we saved people from. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like playing five songs over and over again just because some record company wants it to be played. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play things I hate, let pay, pay me. You know what I mean? I'm willing to take bribes. <laughs> Look, I've been sent some chocolates here by the lads out of, um, uh, what, Carter USM, right? Are they and still the, going? Yeah, they got a gig at the Who's the Daddy Now tour, right? They're playing the Astoria. Uh, December the 14th, on uh, December the 14th. Oh my 14th. god, it's worth going along just to see how few people will be there. Well, see, that I wouldn't use play, but they've sent me chocolate, so there's a, you know, there's a plug. It's like, you know, bribe me, not XFM, yeah. alright? Let's yeah. get some out of this, Steve. Okay. Alright? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Even I'd think it's hilarious to be bribed <laughs> by Carter. <laughs> I mean, I'm a man who tried to bite dodgy speakers Steve, on the street. Steve, it's a Christmas, Father Christmas, <laughs> with some jelly beans. Uh, is that from, who's that from? That's from, that's from the lads, oh well, um, the, it's, who's the daddy now tour. Okay. And I've got, um, and I've got some, uh, um, chocolate money. Right, lovely. Yeah, some any, of it, some of it French. Got anything there from the senseless things? <laughs> All the wonder stuff? <laughs> no, but, you know, we don't know, they're all they're doing now. Yeah. Uh, Carter was alright at the time. Yeah. You know, Carter was alright. Carter? Yeah. Right. Do you like Carter? Not really, no. It's nonsense. Well, I didn't like him singing about dagging him all the time, whatever no. it was. No, yeah. what was it? New, New Cross. Cross yeah. yeah. But, you know, some Good. funny um, lyrics. Have anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh, what do you make no, of the war in Afghanistan? Let's play, yeah. uh, let's play some songs we like. What have you got lined up? Anything? I've got the song for the ladies, that's coming oh, up Oh, lovely. Yeah, let, let's, let's choose a song here and let's have a look. Let's... Right, this one here is tricky. Uh, what? Oh, Radiohead. Just. Brilliant. Is this mute? <laughs> Radiohead and Just. Of the bends. Now that's yeah. a track. That's it's been a, a roller coaster uh, ride of emotions. This show. <laughs> yeah. You know, it started off there with some light-hearted anecdotes about you and animals. <laughs> yeah. It ended up with you sort of spiralling into uh, despair. Well, you know. That's what, that, that, the bed that's the what a track by Muse can do to a man. Yeah. yeah well, clearly. You know. Did yeah. I ever react? But then maybe. Well, I mean, maybe that's what that's what makes them good. I mean, if music can you know create those kind of passions in someone, maybe that's effective. I don't. Well, you've made me think again. I well, love it's, Muse. It's the punk approach, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, thanks uh, as ever for pressing the buttons and contributing. Yeah. Alright, mate. Um, good job, good job. Shame about the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he won't uh, be getting a nine for his movie next week. <laughs> <laughs> we <getting> a nine? <laughs> I think you guys should kiss and make up and maybe oh, make well, it. that's not Carl's fault. Go and kiss him. No, I'm not gonna kiss Carl, him. But go and touch him. I'm not gonna kiss him. Go and touch him. I'm gonna touch him. Go and touch him. Should we go both go and touch him? Yes. Why don't we play a song for the ladies? And touch him. This week drugstore, okay. white uh yeah. white magic for lovers, oh, beautiful track. And let's just go and kiss and touch Carl. Take, take the jumper off, Strokes last night on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais show. With Steve Merchant? Definitely, definitely. Ahoy. And little Carl Pilkington. Little K over there. The K man. Steve? Yes. Don't worry anymore. Go, okay. I've procured some great gifts to give away. I was tired really? of seeing all these other people getting gifts and that, and it was go yeah. all going to that, uh, O Doddle and, uh, O Diddley. Diddley, and, Diddley yeah. And, uh, uh, Anderson and Sturge, or she, at least she steals them herself. Well, at least she, she steals them herself to sell them to feed the habit, and that's yeah. why I don't mind that, because it's no. industrious. Exactly. But I have got Feeder, Echo Park, I've got the Essential Bob Dylan, now that is a good giveaway. That's a great giveaway. And Reloaded 3. Where have you, did you buy these yourself? Did no, you know? little Carl found them. Let me, I have to say, Carl, you've done an absolute dynamite job here, mate. This is great price. And I thought we could play that trivia quiz where we, we we're the challenge. They, if they get right. someone to catch us out, maybe, or some a question. Like you they, confuse me slightly. Explain again. Well, we could play a little trivia quiz, couldn't we? Right. And then we could sell the fish. <laughs> Use the words that you need man. to complete the sentence, and Rick. Then, and then, oh, we could do this. this. What, what's the quiz? I don't know. You not thought this through? No. Coldplay and Yellow. <laughs> You've got to keep talking, Rick. We're on the All radio. Right. I got bored. Did you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. What I was saying was, yes. we could have a little trivia quiz, right? This is how it works. They're, they're phone in, yeah? Right? And they're pitch a question to us two, right? We won't know it, they'll tell Carl, and Carl write down the answer, yeah? Or on his email, right? <laughs> and then it might be something like, um, oh, uh, who was the, uh, first woman MP? And uh, write down the answer, and they go, "Okay, Steve Ricky was the first one MP." We will write it down, you know. And you'll write down something like the Queen, yeah. And I'll write down Britney Spears, <laughs> yeah. And they go, "Well, Ricky says Britney Spears," and the answer is, "Did I see?" Yes, 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 and, yes. And yes. then whoever's so they, can they can they phone in or do they can they email as well? They can email as well, Steve. Right. Okay, so let me just try and clarify this because I didn't really follow that, and no. I know what the competition is. Right. Um, people listening. Phone in or email in with a question, a trivia yeah. question. It could be about anything. I right? don't do game shows. But one, not, but one which we may be able to get, right? They phone in with that or they email it in, but uh, only Carl knows the answer. He asks us here in the qu studio the question. Ricky and I write it down independently. We hand it to Carl. We see who's got the right answer. It's like 15 to 1, but 2 to 1. And the great thing is that the best question that we'll vote on at the very end of the show can win these three CDs. We've got Feeder, Echo Park, The Essential Bob Dylan. That's a two CD set, Rick. Maybe keep the questions highbrow to show our intellect, not things like pop and trivia and... Good idea. And, and we've also got this big, uh, compilation, Reloaded 3. That's also a two CD compilation.
Listen. We'll start phoning and emailing now. Phoning, and emailing, go berserk. Your trivia Absolutely go berserk. For Gervais. I'm the best in science. Well, don't start well, don't giving say that. That's not fair because I'll say I'm best at films if they want yeah, me to. Yeah, but I've already said don't do trivia and entertainment and that. Well, they should. Well, do, they should no. do trivia and entertainment. Music and films is what they should no, do. No, they shouldn't. Or old that's TV. TV. That's that's the cliche of XM listeners, and I know they're more intelligent than they're that. They're not. They're not Rick. They're, they're stupid <laughs> people. <laughs> they're stupid, stupid people, and they only know about a few things. <laughs> Garbage, cherry lips on XFM 104.9. Well, either they really want those CDs, or they want to embarrass us. Mm. Uh, cos the phone lines are going mad and they are going mad. If, we didn't even give out the phone number or the email, Rick. Shall I just give it out now? Well, obviously Quickly. I don't need to. Well, I ought to anyway for those well, that didn't hear it but didn't know it already. Of it. 08700, 08700, 800, 1234. Sorry, that's not 08700, 08700 cos I, I started again cos I got, I sort of fluffed slightly. Yeah, go on. 08700, 800, 1234. And when he says he fluffed like that, that, that's not how he got into television. <laughs> exactly. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to email the question. And only Carl can see the screen so there's no cheating. Probably people don't know what fluffing is, do they? No, I don't think so, Rick. Uh, Carl, have you had a question? What, already? Are we doing it now? Do we do it now? Oh we, I think we should just drip them in throughout the yeah, course of the show. Yeah, yeah, you could want dripping them in. Go on. <laughs> Ask us a right. question. I thought this was a good one. It's from Clive. Go on in. Clive? We've got a listener called Clive. Why? That's all right. Who was the first James Bond? Oh, is right. this film one in? No, no but wait a minute, but wait I a minute. I know, I know this ambiguity because we've talked about we've it. We've talked about this ambiguity before. You see, he could, he might be deliberately embarrassing us because the old myth is that someone played it on radio yeah, at that we all know and love. Yeah. Now, he should have specified, did he mean the film, James Bond, the first well, film, the thing James is, Bond? Is, can I just say, the we, we won't count this one, because the definitive one, and I've talked to, to Glyn about it as well, it, it, it's Doctor No, was the first one of the team that we... Sean Connery. So, Sean Connery's the first screen James Bond. So, we, we agree on that, even if we're both wrong. What did he say it is? I bet he said, I bet he said it was Bob Holness who played him on radio in, like, the 1950s. He didn't say the radio bit, but he said Bob Holness from blockbusters. Yeah. And I was drawing a little blockbuster thing. That's there, really spooky. That is, that's weird, isn't it? But the thing about that is I, I'm worried if it might be a myth. Mm. It may be well, a no, myth. Well, no, I don't, I don't think it is. It's that, that we can't One point that. to me, then. No. Yes. No. Well, you did, did you know not. it? Did you know it? Did yeah, you we talked about no it. No rubbish. Yeah, but who, well, if we talked about it, did I say it to you? No, we agreed that it was Sean Connery because it, it just like, we didn't count Casino Royale because you said it wasn't by the same team. And it yeah, but that wouldn't have been the first James Bond anyway because that came later in the series. No, Rick. No, 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 no don't way. play the music. No way. That's clearly a point. You didn't know it was Bob Holness. He meant it was Bob Holness. I knew the answer, wasn't it? Well, fun loving criminals, Scooby Snacks. Anyway. It doesn't matter, because we, we both agreed once in a pub that the right answer is Sean Connery. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, Rick, the that. point's not that. The man phoned in with a question and the yeah. answer the man was after was Bob oh, Hollis. Okay. And that's the answer I'll tell you I gave. What, the, the answer I was after was me. But that's not to the He's the question master, the man who phoned in, that's ludicrous, you, you, to face the facts. You can't say, you can't say what number am I thinking of. You've got to, you've what got are you talking about? It's got to be the real answer. No, but I knew the answer he was after. So, oh, brilliant. Yes, because that's, you know, even if he's got it wrong, it's such common parlance now that Bob Holness was the first James Bond that I knew the answer. Face the facts. Right, give us another question, Carl. Jeez. Give us another question. Guy's a bad loser, isn't he? <laughs> I had a good one here, but... You, you've, you've forgotten it? Or... I sort of scribbled it down. This um, is brilliant, isn't it? Hang on a minute. We can edit this out, can't we? It's we not live, is it? It's, it's only a pilot. It's gonna... <laughs> 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 this is gonna look great when it, when it comes out. Go on. Which food? Yeah. Um... Carl, you know making up the question. No, no, no it's just that I sort of took down the important bits. Right, this is amazing. This is amazing radio. Go on. Which food... kind of doesn't make you fat? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Right. What kind of a question is that? Oh, this is No, it is proper. I love- I love- the, Imagine um, this on The Weakest Link. <laughs> what kind of food doesn't sort of make you- I mean, it doesn't make you <laughs> fat. Um, what, this is what, what, Okay, do you want me to- Basically, no sort of calories in it. Um, celery. Water. Well, I mean, what do you mean? Do you mean a, 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 a vegetable? No, do you mean you're, a you're right, you're right. Apparently, you, yeah, you, it, it you, uses you up more use calories more to bite it, it than, than, than. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, Rick. One, one all. No, it's not one all because you're supposed is. to write it down. You didn't know. But you didn't. I, what do you mean? I didn't know. You're supposed to write it down. That's the whole point. We're writing. You things said down. water. You said water! But that's because I thought we weren't taking the question seriously because he didn't know what he's talking about! Well, no, we got to set the rules! This is a bit too much like Portishead, for my liking. Was it? Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. Beat a band. Well, that's because Portishead are from your neck of the woods, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> well, Portishead, <laughs> no, I think you're fine. Yeah. I embarrassed myself. <laughs>
<laughs> right, well, another question, quick. Is this, is this one, is this question a real question with a definitive answer? Or is it like, <laughs> what is my most comfortable chair? <laughs> I don't know why people aren't going to maybe like Trivia Pursuit or something, just getting a question off that and then... Because they're, they're a little bit more discerning than that, Steve. Yeah, have you heard the questions? You don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this God. is stuff they've overheard in pubs. <laughs> Come on, yeah. ask it. Ask it, Carl. I look at the Carl takes down and goes, what's that? <laughs> I know. What am I meant to write? Go on then, ask this one. Right, um, what... What sort? No. <laughs> the Jeez. Pope? Yeah. Um, what semi -pushes? Sorry, uh, Mrs. R Robinson, we're gonna have to let you go. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> you are the weakest link, Carl. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, go on. The Pope? Yeah, the Pope. Yeah, we've got the Pope. Yeah, <laughs> that's not strictly a question. He wears a, uh, oh. <laughs> He wears a Desmond's hat. He wears gold blimey trousers. <laughs> yeah. Does he live in a council flat? Yeah, he <laughs> lives in a council flat. He wears but... a semi-precious stone. What's the stone? The Pope wears a semi-precious stone. What is the stone? You mean, you mean, what is it called? Yeah. What is it called? What, has it got like a kind of, um, well, papal I think, name? I think it's like, you know, is it, is it a 18 is it... carat one? <laughs> so we got to try and get right. the carrot uh, yeah. of the Pope's big diamond. He calls it Dennis. He calls it Dennis the Stone. <laughs> <laughs> do they want the, the, do they want the type of gem it is? Like or is there some kind of papal movie? name for it? Or do they want it like the Rosetta Stone? Or I don't know. the... Oh, you <laughs> Oh, I can't. Play, play a record. Play two records. Let's go. Where's your head at? Basement Jacks. Mm. Right, okay, let's get this have right. We, have we- have we knocked this on the head then? It's just not happening. Oh, here he is. Look. Here he is. Come in. <laughs> it, uh, he's- uh, How have you- Oh, oh God. I don't believe oh, that. Oh, that's pathetic. I do not believe that. I that's heard... absolutely pathetic. Now, they won't believe this, will they? No. Right, yeah. if I say that Jonathan Ross just got his massive member out, and he is a big lad. Come and, yeah. come and sit down. I've got your tickets, Mr. Gervais. Thank well, you. What's going on here, then? I, I mean, why are you dropping off tickets? Well, because, you know, in, in the spirit of the, the Comedy Awards, we like to have the rising young stars of the British Comedy that's Awards. That's right, yeah. and that's and, me. Well, we couldn't find him this year, so we got <laughs> to whether he would sit in the rising young star seat, and I, I wanted to deliver the tickets personally, so there's no excuses if he doesn't turn up later. Yeah. I, I always suspected that you were sort of Pretty well endowed, yeah. And now, and now we've seen. You know, it's on webcam. That, Th that was just one of my cocks. <laughs> <laughs> we That's the one you're wearing to today. That, didn't we? We we don't say that. that. No, we're just going to be the happening young station. What's going on? Oh, no, right. you can't say stuff like that. You yeah. can't. No, just, no, no. just careful what you say. Look at after Julian Clary. Ten years in the wilderness, and he comes back in a person. Ten years in the wilderness. What happened to you? That's Jesus. Just, you're thinking of it. Just because <laughs> you're on everything at the moment. I walked in here and I came in here and I thought this is the young happening place. And what do I see in here? Three old men sitting. What are you talking about? Women. I'm look only 28, 27. Here. You all yeah, look, you're please. wrecked. You all look wrecked. You're well, that's because we're always partying. I was looking for some youngsters. Where's the youngsters? I wanted to see some tight leather pants. <laughs> I wanted to see some look foxy up. chicks hanging on you everywhere. What is it? It's a bunch of old blokes on a block. They're washing up in a sink. But look at him. He even dresses for radio. Look this is ludicrous. It's amazing. Looks like you're, you're I love the fact away. you were on the phone to Gervais last night, weren't you? Asking his advice yeah. on clothes. Well, look at him. Well, He's going for the man down the DSS. I like look. that look. That's <laughs> a nice look. Have you, you really got a single pair of trousers that aren't elasticated at the waist? <laughs> <laughs> they're, well, they're maternity jeans, aren't they? They've got a whole frank pan panel that puts this forward. The thing is, what I do, uh, at the end of the uh, week, I can pop these in the pan and I can make a nice suit. With all the food <laughs> that's encrusted in it. his years as a homeless coming before now. <laughs> Look at you, but one step away from Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. I'd like, to be, I'd like to be that bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you dropping off tickets? Are you a little bit, because I, I thought you were married and stuff. Why do you suddenly got this obsession with Gervais? Because I'm a bit rough, aren't I? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like when you see Dale Winton out with those rough boys, I'd like to get one of young. <laughs> when, when a top celebrity in a lovely looking suit drops uh, walks down the corridor mm. with his penis out yes yeah. I know that I'm still trying to- You know run. you've arrived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I was in Albrecht in the same way. For me, it was Des O'Connor. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's the passing one of the baton, if I may use that euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've been battened. But it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's, it, is, it is a pleasure. I don't think I'm complacent, just because I'm mixed with you or you. I still wake up and I think, I don't believe it. I'm mates with Jono. Can I just no, point out one I was listening to the show last week, and I heard you, as always, revealing a little too much about yourself, if you don't mind me saying so. Yeah. Steve Trump. Not as much as you! No, but that was just for the, for the benefit of the room. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And talking about when you used to occasionally urinate in the sink. Yeah. When you were around my house last time and I came in <laughs> get, and you looked a bit shifty. No, please reassure me. It no. was it was more ownership. Yeah. I was like, I went to my territory and, I, and then yeah. then pe other people that come in and go, has Gervais been round here? It's like just marking my territory. Because my coffee the next morning had a hazelnut tank <laughs> that I don't remember putting in. Can uh, I just say something? Because I, I mean, I used to I used to you know mention to you Gervais when we first started getting involved in the business. Yeah. I used to say if there was one celebrity I'd like to be friends with, it's Jonathan Ross. Yeah. Lo and behold, Ricky's befriended Jonathan Ross. 
I'm nowhere to be seen. But Not Ricky invited told around. Me, Ricky told me that could be his friend providing I, I never extended the arm of friendship. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you ever... I if, thought as much. He tries to keep everyone else down he works with from the office, all the other shows. He, he yeah. tries to keep them down. He's yeah. like, I didn't even want I'm you to come one. in. I yeah, wanted yeah. to meet you on the steps. Yeah. I didn't even want to tell you you were around. <laughs> but you called. He went, who's that? Yeah. And he saw your name come up and he went, well, can I meet him? Well, you're, no. com you're coming tonight, though, aren't you? This isn't radio too, by the way. These links are way too long. This is snappy radio. We have to play... Yeah. You, yeah. You might the kids have lost interest. But the kids want to hear Coldplay, Cut a Toad, you know like. How about some more of that instantly forgettable hip hop? <laughs> one, of those, one of those Gary, obscure hip-hop away. That's Thanks. the worst feature on British radio. You should be ashamed of yourself. Thanks. Wait a minute, I've heard your quiz on Radio 2 the other day. I said the hip-hop had it. Put it away. Put it away. I'm Carl. Carl, how you doing? I'm alright. I've got a question for you. Quiet, man. got a question. Yeah. The Pope? Yeah. What semi-precious stone does the Pope wear? That is easy. Go on. Topaz. Is that the right answer? I don't know, I might have wrote it down. <laughs> like, I'm really sorry, Jonathan. It's not, it's not what he publicly admits to, but I have to know, because I was hanging out with him <laughs> at the Groucho one night, and he was saying, oh, look at this, look at this, look at that toe bench, go and buy that, look at look that. Look at that. Vatican City. Look at that, we can make a nice ring out of yeah. that, he said. Didn't go anywhere, but thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I better go, I've got to go, I've got to go and buy some winkle pickers. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. Enjoy it. Peter Stevens. Carl, I wish I could say it had been a pleasure. Thanks. But actually, it was quite creepy. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Beautiful day. Yep. Now, I was just saying that's probably one of my singles of the year, but was it this year or the year before? Oh, uh, crumbs, I don't know. It was, I think, was it 2000, the album? It was the first one off the album. Maybe that could be a question. <laughs> no, we need the answer, don't <laughs> well, we? We don't know the answer. No. We, oh, it's good. Cool well, I just ask, um, John, Jonathan Ross just came in there and to drop off some tickets for the comedy award show that he's hosting yeah. later this evening. Yeah. Uh, interesting, of course, a man who's 40 and still thinks it's funny to get his penis out. <laughs> <laughs> it is, though. I love that. I look, because it's like, when's that, when's that novelty going to wear off? 74, 75, <laughs> when it's just too horrible <laughs> exactly, to show in yeah. public, I imagine. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, he, so he dropped off some tickets for you. Yeah. Um, was I asking you fashion advice last night? Yeah. Came, I mean, he came after a three-hour radio show he's just done on Radio 2. Good show, by the way, worth tuning in. <laughs> um, he came straight around yeah. here, dropped some tickets off for you. He's now got to go and rehearse that show. a lovely man. I was out with you last night. Yeah. Went into this, this pub, like, kind of, that we've been to a few times before. Went in there, and this guy came in and said, Your usual table, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Your usual table? Can I just ask you two questions, <laughs> uh, Godfather? <laughs> uh, one is... <laughs> Have we won an, a prize tonight? On I the don't know. Awards? We genuinely two, don't know. Can you have someone iced for me? <laughs> 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 it's ludicrous. What have you suddenly got over all these people that then do all this way? When have you suddenly become the daddy? <laughs> well, I came from nowhere, and uh, you know, I, I've got I've got polaroids of the head of all right, the stations. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Because what I'm worried about is that, like, when we're wrapped up in our winter coats, yeah. you're walking there in your little sort of you know little black overcoat, and I must look like your hood. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like your goon that walks with you. <laughs> His voice is tall. Uh, very much like Edward G. Robinson. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You are with yeah. a pug face, obviously. Yeah, well, don't go on about <laughs> it. Sorry, I was a freak. Like. All right, no, I don't know what you're doing well, about that. We've not the, even Jonathan Ross couldn't save this show. No. It is the only A celebrity I know. Yeah, I'm all it. out of ideas. I thought we'd have a trivia game. That's rubbish, because he can't read. Or write. Yeah, and that's a, what is so it? So are we knocking the trivia game on the Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we, let's have one final question. What's the, the answer? answer? What, what, what I don't answer? know. I don't know. For the Pope one. I, I don't know. We couldn't even figure out the question, Carl. What's the stone? What's the stone? It's... Oh. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Just don't, uh, entertain yourselves at home while <laughs> Carl looks for the, uh, question. Amethyst. 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 Yeah. Anne <laughs> Thirst. <laughs> no, she was the first woman MP, I think you'll find. Anne Thirst. Rubby. Or Diamondo. Um, so have you got maybe a final question? Let's do one on it. Okay, do it just one on it, and then we knock this on the head. Yeah. Go on in. Where? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Uh, have you not been practicing in all these? We've had ads. We've had music. <laughs> oh, where? What? Rick, I don't think we should call ITV later. Uh, with man, this. Maybe he was talking about Jonathan's inquiry about sartorial elegance tonight. Where yes. what? Yeah. Maybe he just like summed up that <laughs> yeah. conversation in What's just two. What's the most expensive pub in London? I think you won't know because he never pays. Hang on, wait a minute. What does that mean? <laughs> How does, what does that mean? You want me to buy? I'll buy the pub. How much is that? It's a million pounds, no, like, sir. If you go in, uh, according to the Time Out Guide, two thousand and one. If you went in there and bought a big round, it's a beer pub. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive <laughs> pub. Imagine this on Millionaire. Imagine that question well, on Mastermind. I know, your specialised subject, how, how much things are and that, and that, <laughs> and whether they make you fat when you eat them, then. It's in London. Is this like some guy went in the pub last night and thought, this is a bit pricey? <laughs> <laughs>
This is I'm the most expensive gonna, pub I'm I've gonna, ever been in. I'm going to expose them <laughs> exactly. on Ricky and Steve's show. This, does it mean like maybe is it a pub or a club? Maybe where you've got no, to be a no, member? No, it's a pub. I'll narrow it down. It's in Covent Garden. Punch and Judy. That's it. it. Has he got it right? Yeah. Too well, long. I have to hand it to you. Well done. Yeah. So brilliant. So who who was that? Who was that question from? Because maybe that they should get these three seats. Let's let let's let's give them that. Who is it, Carl? There's no way of verifying that. That's probably libelous. They've probably it's made the time out guide. Okay. All right. Carl, who what was it? What are you it? for? You got it right. Yeah, I won. I won. Yeah, Carl. I won. Carl, who was it? The one. Well, listen, they know, so they've won. Yeah. Right. Stone. This is genius, Radio. This is brilliant. I tell you what's letting us down. Him. I know. KP the P-Man. When <laughs> he was just, he was just doing the press <laughs> buttons and it was cool. <laughs> now we let him on the air because we thought it was funny. We quite like him. He's digging a grave for us. <laughs> right, listen, this is a new feature I've introduced called Songs I'd Like to Play on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, this is falling apart. And, uh, and a friend of mine sent me a little CD of uh, little treats and stuff. Oh. And one of them is this track. It's uh, called Monkey Man. It's from the Rolling Stones player, Carl. It's an absolute gem. XFM 104.9. What was that again, Steve? Rolling Stones and a track called Monkey Man. That's from a, a double CD, not available in the shops. My friend Dave G made a compilation for me, burned it onto CD using modern technology. That's one of the tracks on there. What's his name? What's his name? Dave Greenwood, obviously breaking several uh, copyright laws exactly. there. I would not encourage anyone to make copies of anything for anyone. It's breaking his the law. His name again if the police are listening. Dave Greenwood lives in Nottingham. I can How give details. How dare he do that I, for you? It sickens me, Rick. He's making you receive, you know. Stolen goods. Yeah. And there are various artists on there who've barely got a penny, who are losing money hand over fist. The Rolling Stones, for instance. Yeah. And doors. XFM have done that as well, played it off, you know, and that's terrible. Now we've implicated those as well. XFM are uh, culpable, um, so is Dave G. Thankfully not us, Rick. No. We're just middlemen, caught up in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Biggs behind it. There's always Mr. Biggs. just pawns in his game. And, we? Um, <coughs> so that's, uh, I'll be playing another track from that uh, well, uh, later on. I've got a lovely couple of little tracks from my hip hop selection. Looking forward to uh, it. Is Can I just ask Rick, did you, get a, out, did you get a um, little gift here from XFM? I did. Um, I got a lovely little voucher here. It was very nice. Yeah, very thoughtful. I've also got one. How much is yours for? £25. To spend at John Lewis or Waitrose. Yeah. A little uh, kind of gift voucher there. Oh, I think I'd, oh, I think I'd do uh, Waitrose because food, you can get a good lot of food for 25 quid. Absolutely right. You can't get a lot of like haberdashery for 25 quid. <laughs> so I'll be going about, with the food option. The thing about the gift voucher, a lot of people were, re I'm sure, receiving these over the Christmas sure. period. The thing about the gift voucher is it's like, it, it's like, here's 25 pounds, yeah. but I've limited where you can yeah. spend it. It's, it's like, it's like, they don't want to give money because that's go, say, so this is like money, but not as versatile. Exactly. You can't spend it in as many places. And, but it's the thing is that, surely the thing about a gift is, you know, you don't want people to know how much it was. And, unless you're letting them make their, buck their ideas up for next year. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If an aunt gives you like, uh, you know, a single, like a step single, and you've given her 25 quid at the body shop, yeah. you're saying, you know how much that single costs, exactly. so do I, I'm not yeah. gonna say, right? Yeah. Let's make up the difference next year, exactly. Sally, aren't we? You exactly. know what I mean? Let's spend 50 quid on me next year. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much he got? How much did he get? Did you get a gift voucher as well? Yeah, but I work here all week. Right. How much do you get? 150. 150 quid? Yeah. What, in gift vouchers? Yeah. To spend at the same places? Mm. I'd have to say, though, I mean, it's not a very inventive gift, is it? It's Whoever a came up thought, with it, though. It's a lovely thought. It's wonderful to have 25 pounds that I can, I can only spend in two places I never go in. But, uh, no, no, I'm not, so I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Any I'm not anyway. looking a gift horse in the mouth. It, it is a treat. He, My spoke, thought, he spoke to Jonathan Ross like he was a normal person. Uh, from someone whose dad buys him a spade for Christmas, I thought you'd be grateful. <laughs> My only thought is that John Lewis and Waitrose, I mean, it's not very rock and roll, it's not very XFM, is it? No, I mean, a tattoo parlour, yeah. maybe, you know, in a bike a shop. piercing, I might get my face pierced, just a big <laughs> exactly. bolt through my head. But yeah. I mean, they're a little bit, aren't they a little bit like the man? Aren't they a little bit mainstream? Yeah. Right? Eh? What would Billy we say about roll? this? I'll play a record, and don't make it a square record. <laughs> Someone on an indie label or something, or something that hasn't been even recorded. <laughs> yeah, that can't even become available yeah, ever. Yeah, I don't know what instruments they're playing. Oh, not the guitar. Some 41. In too deep. All right, Steve? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Eh? Isn't it? What? Has luck of the, that seemed a long time, all that music we've Yes, made. no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, it's annoying, actually, that Carl never went to the email, because the questions have been sent in there. Oh, good, good questions. And they've all been, uh, sort of neatly spat out with the correct answer. For instance, I might have asked you this, if I was the quiz master, Rick. How many noses do slugs have? Oh, I think, it's, I think it's four. It is four? Yeah point to you there. Let me just see if I can find another one. Who, according to the current issue of Viz, is a cycloptic pop temptress? Oh, don't know. Is it a pun on her having one eye and being yep. sounding like... Cycloptic is the clue. There's yeah. There's only one pop temptress. Oh, it's, um, Gabrielle. Of course. Yeah. Two points. Mine are better. He didn't get them. These are, these are rubbish. 
<laughs> have you ever I watched a quiz show? Because I can understand the question. They're rubbish, I suppose, aren't they? That gives me a chance to know what, what the answer is required. Go on. Uh, let me see if I can find another one for you. Uh, no, that's, you're never gonna get that one, that's too hard. Oh, no, uh, that just, that just... That just teases you more, yeah. isn't it? Uh, what's the name of... No, that's boring, that one. Sorry. Hey, it's just beginning to fall apart again now. Uh, here we are. What's the proper name for Big Ben? Is it St. Stephen's Tower? You know, it absolutely yeah. is. That's three out of three. That's fantastic. Yeah, because the bell, uh, the, named after something like Benjamin so-and-so works in it, and St. Stephen's Tower needs that's the big bell. It's actually, in a weird way, I didn't know any of those. So it's actually quite good that we did kind of balls it up with Carl, because otherwise I'd have, there'd have been egg on my face. Yeah, but I still won. I just won less. Oh, did you? Yeah, you did win. Yeah. yeah. I've already forgotten. I already wiped that out of my memory. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but, hey, Steve, it's not me that's the real winner. <laughs> it's Neil. Who uh, asked that question about pubs? About pubs, he and he's got those three CDs. Just tell him what they are again. Just Feeder Echo Park, a compilation called Reloaded Three. Lots of great stuff on there, and the Essential Bob Dylan two CD. Have set. you called him and told him? No, not yet. This is such a shambles, isn't it? Because what if he goes out or something? <laughs> Actually, if he's listening, can he give us a call? That is so lazy. Can't we call him like Tarrant would? I would have had his number. Him. You've not got his number. I forgot. Carl, oh, this is I, unbelievable. I said get the numbers, Carl. I I wanted to go for the Pope one. Carl, do you actually work here in the week? <laughs> or, like, did you just, <laughs> you know like in a film when they knock someone on the head, <laughs> put on the space you would go to the yeah. room like, Is it like, is, yeah, is it like Secret of My Success and Michael J. Fox, you actually work in the post room, <laughs> but sad is there's no one around that recognises you. So you pretend that you're a producer? Yeah. Because you don't yeah. seem to know any of the rules. Because I reckon that name's made up. When did uh, I say a producer? When <laughs> that, did I say a yeah, Carl Pinkerton is a name that you'd come up with on the spot. No, he doesn't work, no, he's not a producer, he says he works in sound. He works That's what in he sound. Says, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, well, work with this. This is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. I've played it before. I'll play it again. It's one of my favourite tracks of all time. It's Bob Dylan, If You See Her, Say Hello. Here's a little bit of trivia for her. This is the last song I ever played on the old XFM before wow. they came in and said, OK, you can go now. That's incredible. Isn't it? Bringing tears to my eyes. Lovely. <laughs> The greatest singer songwriter of all time. Beautiful. With one of his uh, best songs there. Absolutely. Bob Dylan, if you see her, say hello. She might be in Tangiers. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's having a go. He's I in, mean, if you're going to go to Tangiers on the off chance to <laughs> yeah. try and find her, I wouldn't yeah. bother. <laughs> yeah. You know? But I mean, you know, he's if you're going to be there, then he's desperate. He's desperate. He's going, yeah. well, she might be in Tangiers. Uh, have you checked upstairs? She's definitely not upstairs. <laughs> just, just have a look. Well, anyway, that was Song for the Lovers. But, because I'm so excited about having such great prizes to give away for the first time, some albums that <laughs> Carl found, um, got we've got the lucky winner on the line. Hi Neil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Ricky. Hi. You're a winner with XFM. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you like Feeder? They're a good group, aren't they? Feeder, well, yeah, the kids seem to like them. They do, the kids like them, and then Bob Dylan, uh, he's a he's a great, um, lovely bloke with a guitar, isn't he? <laughs> You're working hard, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with this, mate. <laughs> really. Honestly, I just don't know what else to do. I, I come in every week. I try, uh, try and write, do. Yeah. You have to write a new series of uh, of the Office. I'm, That's what I, you have to do. I'm trying, but I've got a voiceover work now, so there's more yeah, money in that. You're, you know. you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Woolies adverts. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't mention that. Shouldn't right? No, it's all right. It's so, all right. Uh, Neil, uh, Steve Merchant here. Uh, will you be looking forward to receiving these albums? You've got Feeder, Echo Park, uh, Bob Dylan album, the best of, and uh, a compilation. You looking forward to them? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, it's going to really lift my Christmas. Uh, I'm not going to not going to get to your home this year, so that's going to make up for it, I'm sure. Neil, what what are, are those three? Which one will you be putting on first? I think Feeder Echo Park because the kids seem to like it. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much. What are you be doing for the rest of the weekend? Are you going to be chilling out? <laughs> I'm chilling, man. I'm freezing. I'm playing golf right now. It's, uh, that's it's madness. Very, it's very cold yeah. out here. <laughs> What's your handicap? <laughs> What's my handicap? My short game's terrible, but... Right, uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna be watching the, uh, National Comedy Awards this evening. I hear that The Office, uh, is nominated. <laughs> ah, you guys are the shoe-in. Sorry? Yeah. You're, you're a shoe-in. It's yours. Thank uh, you. I don't know what a shoe-in is, but I'd like to go to one. I think it means, like, um, foot you're, in the door. Lovely. Yeah, Does no, it? not foot in the door. It's like, it's no. yours. Your name's already on it. Oh, really? Wow. I would think so, yeah. Well, other, what, what, why would Ross stop around? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he makes the decisions. Neil, but... thanks very much for calling. Those, uh, those uh, prizes are going to be winging their way to you. We're just like real DJs, aren't we, Neil? Just say we're just like real DJs and we'll you leave guys, you alone. You guys are just like real DJs. Thanks Enjoy your game. Alone. Cheers. Bye. Step on my old size nine stereophonics. Absolutely. Well, talking to Neil, it all brought it home. You know, maybe I should give it a little bit back. Yeah, uh, you've I'm, had a good year. I'm hanging out with Jonathan Ross. Exactly. I'm doing ads, yeah. right? But 
I care. I'm still in touch. You know what I mean? I'm still down with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, it's coming up to the time of year where we should, you know, care about people less fortunate than themselves. And what I've done, I've recorded a, a, a Christmas single. That's beautiful. And all proceeds are going, you know, to, uh, you know, little sick people and that. And Are there going to be any proceeds? There's going to be not a sausage. <laughs> right. So I'm right. safe. But I'll tell you this, what I was thinking actually, I was listening this morning, and you go in, I was doing some Christmas shopping, you go in the shops, and there's always, you know, walking in a winter wonderland, and all those songs. You know, no one writes those sort of things anymore. No. Uh, it, well, you're wrong, Steve. Really? Listen to this. It's What's called it called? Don't Cry, It's Christmas. Let's hear it. Don't, Don't cry, my baby. Santa's coming soon. Though you ain't got a mommy or daddy. Santa still loves you And he's riding on his reindeer To trample down the gloom So don't cry, my baby Santa, gonna make it soon Don't cry, my baby Santa's feeling kind Though you know you never see him He's not just in your mind And it's not that he's invisible It's because you're going blind So don't cry It's Christmas Santa's still on time Don't cry my baby, Santa's on his way You know he's got six billion children And he's only got one day You've got slightly less than that If I were you, I'd pray So don't cry, it's Christmas You're nearly ten, it's a little gay Do you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's already become a standard. One of the classics. Thanks. There's a star. Ash. Good. It's a great show so far, isn't it? Enjoying it, Rick, but I'll tell you this, what worries me Go is on. something we've not done, which is what we've not, we've not taken on board some stuff I've heard from the management. They've said they've enjoyed the kind of light-hearted flippery, you know, yeah. in the past on the yeah, show, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the likes of Jonathan Ross getting just, their just knobs out. Yeah. But, uh, they just feel that sometimes it's a little bit cheap. Really, no, a little bit what, crass, and they just want us way? to perhaps be a little bit more highbrow at times. A little well, bit more because I mean, well, you're a smart yeah. guy. I, I am. Yeah. Know. We've I've proved that with clubs having four noses and Stevens Tower. Can I ask you, Rick, about politics? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Because I'm politics. A I am a political person. <laughs> I thought this much. Go on. What on the politics? What do you make of who to vote for? Vote for the government. Whoever's in the government. Yeah. That's the it. liberals ever? No, not if they're not in government. No, okay. Don't. What about the foot and mouth, which a lot of people are worried about? Don't worry about it. No? No. Recession is hit, and a lot of people are losing their jobs. Should yeah. they, what should they do about Get it? Get another one. Get, Get another, another job. job. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this is, and this is, I mean, you can have this for free. If you do lose your job or something, get another one, but get a one that's even better than the one you lost. Right. <laughs> okay, good advice. Yeah. Maybe get, maybe, if you were just like, kind of the post boy before, like Carl. Get a, in charge of the company, get a manager's job. Right, become director general or something. More money. <laughs> good, 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 good. And oh. don't lose that one. <laughs> okay. And, um, oh, what else is concerning people? Know a lot of, we get calls all the time, Rick, to the yeah. station. People saying, I'm worried about the war in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you make of the war? Is it, is, or, or, it, is well, it one of your favourites? Well, what, I, no, 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 my favourite. All war's bad, uh, but, uh, oh, my favourite. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. What Falklands. is your favourite? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Is it? The Falklands War? It was a range war. What does Not, that mean? That means Carl? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I drawing pictures at school and that. Yeah. It, it means that our missiles could go sort of 17 kilometres, yeah. and the Argentines only had missiles that go like, you know, 9 kilometres. So we just parked our boats about 12, 13 kilometres off it, and we were shelling them. You know, we were yeah. shelling it out of there, right? And theirs were falling in the water. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's the war equivalent of holding a midget at arm's length. Right, and he's trying to punch you. And he can't reach yeah. you, you're just kicking him in the balls at <laughs> the will. That was, uh, Rick, a lot of people talk about WW1 as being the Great War. Was it a Great War for no, you? No, it was a good war. It wasn't a Great War. Right. <laughs> What's the problem well, for I you? Well, I liked all the, I liked the bayonets and the trenches and all that stuff, but I could have done without the poetry. Right. <laughs> only, only because the poetry's a little bit bent. <laughs> okay. And, you know, and what I'm saying is the only time that it isn't bent in a war but, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's beautiful, but there's one now I remember, it was, um, we are the dead, once we lived, felt dawn on our face, but now we lie in Flanders fields. 
be honest, if you'd have had a gun in your hand instead of a pen, yeah. you might be alive today. Be dead, yeah, and the war yeah. would have been over by Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, high five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so losers. that's politics, Carl. Any other questions, politics Carl, you want to solve? You know, any high Economics. Features? I've done economics. Because, yes, yeah, the economical. Anything I else? I just think you should look after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know <Okay>. what I mean? <laughs> Oh, I've just got something to say to you. Hip hop, hooray! Hey. Let's play my hip hop track. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> Put Whoa. your hands in the air. Yay. Move them round like you just don't care. Yeah, yeah. you're not even bothered. <laughs> I'm playing an old school track this week, Rick. Excellent. I'm going back in time, rewinding the clock. How are you spelling school, Steve? <laughs> oh, with a K. Go on. Uh, ever heard of anything by Digital Underground? The Humpty Dance, might you might the remember. The Humpty Dance. Do you remember that? That was, um, a fellow sat on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And he was he was getting dissed by yeah. the police, and he fell, and he broke all up. And the king's horses shouldn't have really been sent to to repair an egg. <laughs> they couldn't do it because of their hooves. <laughs> uh, anyway, Digital Underground, for those that don't remember, was an Oakland group led by Shock G and Chop Master J. Go on. <laughs> uh, but of course, most famous now for the fact that they featured uh, Tupac Shakur. Love him. Where he first began. You'll hear him on this track. It's called. Uh, what's that? Which one have I chosen here? I think it's called the same song. Have a listen. <laughs> Ross was uh, slagging off the hip hop feature, wasn't he, when he came in earlier? And how can you not like that? Digital Underground, same I, song. I think he was scared of it, Steve. I think he was intimidated he it. by your by your youth. Well, he's scared of the youth. He's scared of the fact that I'm down with it. The homers and the bitches and the hoes. Yeah, he, yeah. Because he, he's not with that. You I know, he looks dapper. If they saw him in the street walking down like a ponce, they'd just laugh and jeer. But yeah, probably rhythmically. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he couldn't come back at anything. And you'd be high fiving. Oh, they'd, they'd be loving, loving me. you. I, th I think he was intimidated by your style. I think he's jealous of you, to be honest. Do you know, I think what he's probably most jealous of is the looks. <laughs> yeah, I think. Do you so. know what I mean? Yeah. I got the new haircut because we might be on the telly later. He right? didn't mention that, did he? Didn't, did he? Well, he's never seen the old one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've kept him from me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got nothing to compare it with. <laughs> but that was a great hip hop selection there. Yeah, lovely. Even lovely. though I say so yourself. Rick, we've had a couple of people, because uh, they've, they've listened to your dissection of current politics and ep economicals. Yeah. And they've got a couple of questions for you. Go on. We've had one from uh, uh, Jimmy Ruffin. He says, uh, what becomes of the broken hearted? Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, that is a difficult one. I don't think I've got time to go into that, because it's, it's a very, it's a very delicate problem. Can you answer this one from the KLF? What time is love? <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> Listen, keep those questions coming in uh, for Ricky Gervais. You may be able to sort them out later. Have we got a second break, Carl? Oh, dear. It uh. <laughs> Still to come. It's not the end of the world. Super furry animals. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. XFM 104.9. Rick, you going to do your film review for us? We've got time for it, I think. I'm not, no. Why not? I'm not going to do it anymore. You're not going to do it anymore? No. You love it, don't you? No, it's great, and I just think it's time, you know, I did, I did a dozen. But I did all the do the films that I would give like nine or you know ten out of ten for. I don't want to drop the standards. Right. I don't want to start doing films that are eight out of ten. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's where a lot of film reviews go wrong. Yeah. Ross I've being one of them. Yeah, I've seen yeah. them go. Oh, this is worth seven. Don't do it then. <laughs> yeah. If it's no good, don't do don't it. No, it's yourself. No. Sure. So, so no more film reviews. No. Oh. In, until a great film comes out. Sure. Okay. Like uh, Braveheart two or something. Yeah. Which will be which will be well, nine now. Quite an event for. Yeah. I'd have thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so nine for that. Uh, in well, advance. Rick, <laughs> it's almost the end of the show, and yeah. still got time for the uh, song for the ladies. I can't but wait. Carl won't be here next week. I mean, where's going? Where are you heading, Carl? Going away for Christmas? Tell us. What? It's a secret. What you want? You, 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 <laughs> well, in case, in case your fans try and track you down. What? Are you going taking pictures of planes in Greece? <laughs> what? What political? Rob your house. Satirical, don't Steve. <laughs> Satirical. <laughs> where are yeah. you going? What are you doing? If Go I tell you what. If I was caught in a foreign country and the, and, and the government got said, no, it's okay, they were train spotting or plane spotting, I'd go, no, I am a spy. <laughs> exactly. No, I am a spy. No, you were, it's all right, you were train spotting. <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't spying, please. I saw you at the uh, Doctor Who convention as well. No, no, prob no I'm probably an assassin or something, <laughs> yeah. I'm probably an assassin. <laughs> Carl, where are you going, mate? Tell us, come you, on, no, we haven't got time. to say when... What's that, are you? What? People rob your house if... Yeah. We didn't say, tell us your address, <laughs> where, tell us where you leave the key, and <laughs> yeah. then tell us you're going on holiday. We said, where are you going on holiday? Barbados. Are you? Ooh. Showing off. Yeah. Boasting. I'll tell you what, Steve, what I'd like to see, and a lot of the listeners right there too, pop round there now, 
Touch him for Christmas. Shall I touch him for Christmas? Touch him any way you like for Christmas. Can love I just him introduce for the song for the ladies before? Well, we'll love on. him for Christmas, though. <laughs> Can I just say, yes, yeah, what but the as long is? as you love and touch him. We're going to leave you with uh, the excellent Tim Buckley, of course, father of Jeff. I'm and, just going to be uh, watching, but love him. That was look also, at his little face. Also on that CD that my friend Dave sent me earlier, so if you don't like it, blame him. Yeah. Uh, while he's been arrested if, by the copyright police. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's called Buzzin' Fly. Let me touch you, Carl. Oh, Steve. Uh, Go on. I'm not going to Licking a man for Christmas. I'm not going to touch Oh, look. I'm in touch with your family inside of town. Get I can put you in touch with your family inside and my family. I'm liking it. Okay. So I can't look, I'm busy. Okay. Look, I'm busy. <laughs> oh, good.